want to lose either of you. And plus, we still need to find Strata. It'd be no, be, be no use if you're sitting in a cell. <laughs> Don't use that against me. You know, I care about him, too. I want you to make an inside check, Josie. Sorry, that's Leon. That's not the right one! <laughs> yeah. Can I go get this blood off me, though? Yeah. Yes. 22. Um, as you're talking and lecturing them, um, you see Lucian's listening at first, but then he kind of spaces out. And um, when he when he looks back at you, he seems significantly more serious. Lucian? What? Did, did something happen? No. Are, did you have another weird dream or something? No, just a weird feeling. A oh, feeling? Deja vu, I guess. What kind of deja vu? I don't know. I feel like we've had this conversation, or I've had this conversation, with someone before. It's weird. I don't think it was you. Didn't it? Doesn't you need to sit down or anything? No. No, it's fine. And he, he turns and he walks away. Um, but you seem you think he seems very disturbed and uh borderline traumatized by the feeling. Uh you think it's something that really struck a chord with him. And she's like And something in you tells you maybe you shouldn't say something like that to him at least again. Yeah, and now she's like let's keep that. Because <laughs> you think that he understood like what you were saying, and you don't think what you said is what upset him, but you think it's that like it triggered memory. something. There's something that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now she's like, I'll keep it. <laughs> Which is weird, because you've seen this kid grow up. Yeah, so she's like... Well, With she's you also, and his mom. Well, she's also like, I just had this weird dream, too, so like I'm kind of like disoriented. <laughs> <laughs> so she's kind of like, this is crazy. Sabora, I know you weren't here, but did you have any strange dreams? She's out of the shower now. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, actually, after I got kidnapped, yeah. What time was it? Um, so basically, Saren and Strahd were, like, in the same body, but, like, the body was Saren, and he was like, I'm gonna throw myself in this portal because (laughs) because Saren's more important, and there was this girl over here. What did she look like? She had brown hair and brown eyes. Sarah and me saw that same girl. That's crazy. In our dreams, at least. <laughs> she said that she wanted Sarah, and I'm like, why not both? Why not both? If that's the case, I guess. <laughs> that's true. And then, and then I hugged Strahd. Well, Sarah then turned into Strahd. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, you know that's not how it went. You have to remember... Because that's the key to defeating them. But he didn't say who them are. I mean, Leon told me something like that, where he has to remember something, or everything, apparently, and or else everything's going to fall apart. So... I guess we have some remembering to do. <laughs> if I only knew what we needed to remember. I wish I remembered what I needed to remember. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. I wish I could remember things. <laughs> How's everyone else doing? Um, everyone else seems pretty normal. Uh, the only one who's a little shooken up is Lucian, and he's kind of sitting down and he's kind of staring at the floor. But you think that if you decided to go do something, that he'd probably come along. Yeah, they, she just kind of like gives him like a water and lets him. You also think that he didn't tell you entirely everything. Yeah, no, she's already. Um, like... But. You're not sure what he saw, thought, yeah. or heard. But he did say he did not have a memory, so you don't think it was he saw anything. Mm-hmm. Mary's like, you need to inquire. <laughs> no, I mean, you okay, don't. I just make sure. It's just you had a high insight check, so I want to make okay. sure I give you as much as I can from okay, that. I just want to make sure if I need to, like, I need to go <laughs> ask him something. But, okay, no. Jesse will just, you like, think that he'll probably talk to you when he's ready? Yeah, no, Jesse will just give him, like, water in space so mm-hmm. he can just process. What do you all want to do while you're here? Let's go beat up something else. Um, <laughs> you <laughs> do know, the, the butler did tell you guys when you came in that James is in the house and he is currently visiting with um, 
Uh, Ebony. Well, Liam will probably be the one to go see what's up with Ebony and James. Yeah. Um, the butler directs you to um, James's office, and uh, you, you see James there. He's not actually with Ebony currently. Yeah. Um, and he says, hi, Leon. Uh, what, do you, what do you need? Are you okay? He's got his axe, and he's like, I can't do it right now. <laughs> he's like, well, I was checking to see how Ebony is, and if everything's all right over there. Yeah, she's awake. Um, she's woken up. She's a little shaken up and traumatized, but um, she doesn't really want to say much about Sadra. I mean, that's fair. She went through a whole hell of a lot with that. Yeah, that's an understatement um, based on what you're, you guys said, but she hasn't really said anything to me about that yet, and I don't really think it's wise to push her as a doctor. I don't think it's wise either. He says, but I think that you guys will be able to talk to her in the next day or so, if you'd like to, but I would like to give her a full day of rest before you guys speak with her. Sounds good. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's completely fine. Um, we have, I guess, a few requests from, like, since everyone else is busy. Mm-hmm. So, you know Josie and Sarah are performing an opera, right? Or were you not there for that? Yeah, you guys invited me. Yes, and then... Me and Archeon are going to a show on Wednesday about some boat. Where? Bonneville. It's like oh, the SS Bonneville? Yeah. It's at the Red Willow Theater. The Red... The, the, oh. That theater. Okay. Is there something weird with that theater? Uh, higher class people usually don't go there. Um, it's not that lower class people generally do. It's just people of the renown of, like, Sadra and myself don't usually attend. Okay. But that's not... That's not a reflection on somebody's uh, status. So if you win, it wouldn't be a problem. Okay, just wanted to make sure for that. <laughs> he was like, uh, but I think... I think that'll be a good show. I've heard good things. It's going to be like Abraham Lincoln's assassination at the show. <laughs> he says, I cannot attend that day, though. I have um, multiple meetings with patients. That's fair. <laughs> uh, but I will be attending the opera. And I assume when word gets around that I'm attending... Sadra will probably attend as well. Also, that Alexandria. Oh, Alexandria. That guy. Do you seriously? Kidnapped Sabora. What? Yeah, so he kidnapped Sabora, and apparently his wax golems of, are of dead victims because he cuts up, takes up. Wax their, golems. Yeah, his wax museum. Oh, they're like golems. You know golems. Oh, they're golems. Golems. Yeah. Sorry, your accent. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> And, and they're made of people's hearts that he's killed. Here's, Josie broke down this list of people that he's killed. Andre Dyrith? Yeah. He, he like, and he's like, he went missing just a couple weeks ago. I mean, missing. He went on a business trip, according to his wife. <laughs> um, she probably assumed, but if he's... I guess dead. <laughs> he's <laughs> like, ha ha ha. Anyway. He's actually on the list. Mm-hmm. That's so and That's funny. actually who Quill said was the last person. Um, and <laughs> you guys did bring Quill with you, by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's just chilling. Yeah, she can't be more than 10 meters from Sabora. <laughs> she starts laughing. He's like, ha, that's funny. Anyway, that was what's up. And that's apparently what that artist guy was doing. Mm. That was really crazy. He's like, that is wild. He's like a basement. Mm. Well, anything else about him? Um, he's, oh, he apparently works with Sadra. He what? Quill says he talks a lot about Sadra. She's here now. I'll come out and talk to her in a minute. Um, anything else? That's all we could gather besides the wax golems. He's possibly worked with Sadra. He's killed this, these people. Wax golems are victims beating hearts. Mm. Okay. Do you need anything else from me? No, I just want to tell you what's going on. <laughs> okay. I'll come out and I'll talk to uh, Quill with you all. Because I'm curious now. <laughs> I was like, I'm writing this shit down. <laughs> I don't remember anything. Um, and he approaches Quill and you all and he goes, So, Leon told me about um, Alexandre. I apologize. On, I guess, the city's behalf. I don't know. Joseph's like, I'm going to um, get this wax sculpture, by the way. It has tracking on it. Do whatever you want. 
Um, magic on it, like... It's just a wax sculpture now. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> he, he asks Quill, he says, so they say that you were also kidnapped by Alexandre uh, du Cerce. And she's like, yeah, he... He kind of did the same thing he did with the board, except for we didn't go on a, uh, a date. I think that's what Lucian said, that he took her on a date. That's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. And, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, so, okay. Um, she's also taking a shower because um, Lucian was like, you can just go shower. You're kind of stinky. Um <laughs> And so he asks, and he's like, and Leon said that she, he was working with Sadra. And she says, yeah, so he would have a lot of conversations about Sadra de Henner and how he was doing her bidding or something like that and how they had a deal and how they were working together. And he's like, had a deal? And he, she's like, yeah, something about how he was getting something out of it. Um, I don't know what, though. He didn't really specify. And she's like, he's like, what did you be getting out of it? That's weird. Okay. Um, interesting. Uh, but that seems to be where the conversation between the two of them ends. I guess Liam will go tell <laughs> that lady he helped about her husband being a dead. You're gonna go tell her? Yeah, might as well. Yeah, you go to the mill and you knock on the door. Is Liam going by himself? Would you like someone to come with you? I mean, she's like, I'm going. Archeon goes. <laughs> That's literally all I'm gonna say. He's like, I'm gonna go tell this lady her husband is dead. Archeon goes with. And you guys go to the mill and you go. And, um, she opens the door. She's like, I can't remember her name. Leia. <laughs> um, Miss Leia? She's like, hi! Um, sorry. It's so nice to see you all again. Um, probably not very good news, bad news, neutral news. <laughs> oh? Uh, depends how you react to it, I guess. Well, your husband is, uh, found dead. I have not heard anything. No, because he went missing and dead. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I have a list. The pool. The the the. I have a list of police missing. Police haven't said anything. I have a list of missing people here from someone that's been committing murder. But he isn't. Him. He's not missing. He's just on a business trip. <laughs> I'm sure that Archeon. Archeon says. Well, are his business trips usually this long? And she's like. No. Hi. Okay. Um, she seems a little confused and not exactly happy about the news, but yeah. not exactly sad, but she's trying to comprehend. Yeah, it's like, what's going on? Um, kind of thing. But she's like, okay, I guess thanks for telling me. <laughs> uh, did the per- is the person who killed him getting justice? Like, are they, are, did you tell the police? He's like, I'm afraid we can't tell the police about this. Tell the Lord Governor. Well, this person may be working with Sadra. So? Would I count her as that? I, she, would, she, she, would something happen to that person if they're working with Sadra? Um, if you have proof that they killed people, I mean, the Lord Governor is the law of the land. Anybody who breaks the laws and murder is one of them. Um, they're taken to the Crucible building. Mm-hmm. Damn, like, hmm. Archeon says, on what would be considered proof? She's like, probably a weapon and a body? Maybe a confession? (laughs) It's not really a weapon. It's not really a body anymore. This would be just hard to prove. (laughs) And she's like, she's like, you could also, hmm. Maybe if you have, like, a witness account. I don't know who the person is, but if you knew who the pe- the person was, uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm just like, I don't really know much, but I, I think I think murder needs to be brought to justice. Who knows? I'm just not sure about the laws of the land around here. Thank you, madam. 
Well, you can look. They're they're posted outside the Crucible building. Oh, my God. And why don't you tell her who... I don't know if Leon should, though, because then she wouldn't believe him. She's already a little bit skeptical. Oh, that's true. Um, what if I told you was a famous artist that could possibly murder these people? Um... I think most people wouldn't believe you. Yeah. Unless you had <laughs> solid proof. Hmm. Like I said, probably a weapon. Or a body. Or a witness. Or all of the above. Or <laughs> proof. Hmm. They're the worst person to bring along. <laughs> Archeon said, I do think she has a point, though. I do think that a murderer should be brought to justice. It's going to be really hard to prove that case, though. I don't think so. We have multiple of the things that she has listed. Well, he's, like, renowned for influence. True. Money. But if we have proof that he did wrong, do you think that would matter to the Lord Governor? Probably because not. he seems to be, as she said, judge and jury. Mm. I guess it we... doesn't seem like he listens to class if somebody breaks the law that's fair the only exception to this may be Sadra herself because you know of where we are but if he and her are working together but also it just seems like it's a deal so nothing crazy who the the, the, the artist guy they could be perhaps working together but that has nothing to do with the lord governor we haven't even met him yet i guess we go meet him <laughs> I don't know how we get in. Oh, yeah. I forgot it's all blocked off all the time. Unless we had proof of a crime to be committed and brought it to the Crucible building. The wax golems? The hawks? We could take a live one and then... <laughs> Lead the wax golems over to the Crucible building? Yeah. Do you think they follow us? That far. Maybe if I anger the guy enough or make him chase me around or something. We don't even know where Alexandre is. Maybe that could be like the Sabora's shoes. And then, <laughs> and then, and then I'll just run. <laughs> I really think so. I'm not even joking. I suppose. Well, I'll have to figure something out. And he, he, gl- he glances at the sun and he's like, It's starting to get a little later. Not night, but afternoonish. Yeah, looking around, and he's like listening for the fucking howl- the howling. He's like, "There's no howling." He's like, "I don't think that she's uh, it's there." Him? See, I, I don't think know. it's just a wolf. I don't think the wolf is near right now. I think, but I think we should reconvene and talk to our friends about the laws and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna stop by. Let's stop by the piece of little building really fast, though, and I can write okay. it down or something. Yep, you guys stop by the Crucible building, and you see there is a list of laws. I want you to know, Leon's squinting, and he's like, I don't think I can read this. Um, number one is thou shalt not kill. <laughs> Smear, shut up! <laughs> shut up! Shut up! <laughs> don't, don't speak like that to me. Thou shalt <laughs> not kill is the number one. Um, That's crazy. Uh, the second is thou shall not steal. And there's um, fine print under it that says in any regard, in any way. Um, oh, hang on. No stealing, no killing. <laughs> and for all of them, it says in any regard, in any way. Ooh, so it doesn't matter. Stealing. Killing. And at the... Um, it also says at the very bottom, you know, it says um, these rules are added. These laws are added at the Lord Governor's uh, discretion. He is judge and jury, quite literally. Mm-hmm. Uh, breaking these laws uh, equals execution. So it's like, that sucks. I can't if found steal. guilty. It's like, that sucks. I can't steal. <laughs> just don't get caught those are the only two rules it's not illegal if you don't get caught those are literally the only two laws 
He's like, don't kill and don't steal. He's like, well, that's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and, uh, make a perception check. It, in fine print, it says, except for Sadra. <laughs> he ain't got no perception for a laugh of him. He got a 16. And you hear some people talking um, around about the Lord Governor what is since it? you're there. Um, someone says, I heard that the Lord Governor has never proven somebody to be innocent. <coughs> someone responds and said, well, I heard that's only because none of the high class has actually been charged with a crime. What if somebody of high class was put in there? What do you think the Lord Governor would say then? I think he'd say innocent. And the other person says, well, he is judge and jury. Of course he'd kill them. What do you mean? Of course he'd execute them for their crimes. It doesn't matter status. It's just like the, the cathedral. Because in the cathedral, they don't care about class. They shouldn't care about class in the crucible building either. The other person says, well, I guess we'll have to see if a, somebody of a high status is ever brought to court. <laughs> then he's like, Leon should be, it's a Phoenix Wright case. <laughs> I'm going to use the bathroom really quick. But afterwards, you guys head back to yeah. the house. He's like, I guess he'll come with his two Yeah, you guys can talk. You're going to be, I guess, the, the sole audience for me, for my ass. So what if I got so what if I what if I went to court? Why would you do that? What if we took that guy who kidnapped you at Alexandria <laughs> who says that and took him to court? <laughs> and get all his money. Okay. How do you plan to do it? Well, so I guess we were I was telling that lady that Tiger Rap was dead, of course she doesn't believe it, it's really hard to prove that type of shit, put him in Ashes probably now control us. But, right? So, there's only two rules in the goddamn land. It's don't kill, don't steal. Any regard. Uh -huh. Any regard. Uh -huh. So, like, let's think of this. Like, let's think of this. We got two witnesses. You mm -hmm. and Quail. Okay. That's one of the evidences we have. Mm -hmm. We have evidence of, like, him killing people, which is the wax golem. We can maybe take it or something because it has a live beating heart in it. We have... <laughs> Josie wrote down his diary evidence. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if her writing it down, though, is going to be good enough because it, I feel like it would have to be his original handwriting because, you know, if she's just writing it down, maybe she just could just fabricate something just to... We can't ask for a warrant in this house because we can just hide the diary or whatever. Maybe we should have took it, but he would be too skeptical. Like, it's kind of on me. Yeah. But we have a lot of the evidences here. So maybe we could take him to court. Um. So then some rumors are heard is that he's harsh, and he's judge and jury. Uh -huh. and, but no high class has ever been trialed. Okay. So, I mean, I'm thinking about it, but I don't know. It's kind of tough. So if we take Mr. Thing and try and charge him with murder, murder and how would that affect uh, us getting into Sadra's ball? See, that's what I'm concerned about. Because right? if they're working together and we have him executed, she's going to probably feel some type of way about it depending on how he's aiding her. Yeah. And she's probably going to not like us for that. That's why I'm a little bit hesitant to go through with this. Yeah. Because I don't know what kind of deal with they got. I don't know if Sadra's the barely benefiting or if she even cares. And this is just like, you only know each other by paper sort of thing. Yeah. I don't know how close this is to them. I don't know. But it could be cool. I don't know why it'd be cool. I just said be cool. <laughs> well, of course, uh, you know, a kidnapper and murderer should be brought to justice, but... They should, but it's also, like, how old... I, I, maybe, I mean, I don't have to get in the ball, do I, to leave? I don't think so. I think we... We just have to do whatever something, something, Miss Talisman, whatever we tried, we figured out last time. 
Yeah, I think maybe we should try asking the book how to use talismans. I think we should ask the book that when we marry the guy. <laughs> but also, I don't have to be at the ball. Right. I don't. So. So I, do you want to, if if we go through with this, do you want to? <laughs> do you want to try and convict him while we are at the ball? Uh, he might be going to the ball. Remember? Yeah, he's going to the ball. So I mean, I can't convict him on the day of the ball. <laughs> so I was like, he said. He, so basically, he told Sabora what's up, like you know, the judging and all that. And he's like, and Sabora and him were basically talking like, is it really that smart to trial him if like say, we might get on Sage's bad side to not get invitation? Yeah. That's what's going on right now. That's the conversation that Sabora and Leon you know, just had. Because if they're, um, like, business partners, then... Archeon you know. says, um, but would she actually correlate herself with him if it meant making herself look bad? That is true, because if he's convicted for killing, which is literally the two laws, no stealing, no killing, then... She would have no affiliation. No, she wouldn't want to do anything about it. See, not I was publicly, publicly. Not publicly. See, yeah. I was thinking I could be the lead person for the case, I guess, against him. So in case y'all get, if, so in case Saj so Sager doesn't want to give y'all invitations, which she already did, so you're fine. Then I won't be the one going to the ball. In case. <laughs> As you're discussing, it is reaching towards six p.m. Oh no, Jesse. Sarah. Yep, and you guys know what you gotta do. Jesse's like, well, me and Sarah have to go to rehearsal. So I guess I'll see y'all whenever it ends. Hopefully not when the Red Death is around. <laughs> Sarah's like, I don't think so. I don't think it would be that smart to do that. <laughs> no, I don't think he's that stupid. Anyway. Stay anyway, safe. I will. Bye, gang. <laughs> I just see you and Sarah say goodbye to everyone and leave. Um, you guys head over to the opera house. Um, and... How'd you get there? Uh, your main man opens the doors. It's like, welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome. Uh, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. Yeah, baby, baby. My man and woman of the hour. So, um. Okay. So it's time to rehearse. Okay. And he pushes you guys both on stage, and he hands you guys um, opera <laughs> scripts. Are there any other actors with us? Nope. She like looks towards Sarah and like Taryn's like You guys go focus <laughs> scripts. And Jesse's like, Do I really have to say this line? <laughs> um, and it's all singing. So there's no parts not singing. That's fine. I mean Jesse already it's, it's an opera. She expected yeah. it. She's like <laughs> And I want you to roll a performance check. Oh, to see how well you can do during rehearsals. Oh jeez. This is gonna be awful. I know my luck was only for one round. No, I got an 18. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Gets. Please tell me that again. I'm going to scream. You have 15. Hey, not bad. Um, he's like, good, 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 good. You sound pretty good. You just got to remember your lines and we'll be fine. Um, so any any update generally um, on James Musell coming? James Musell is coming. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Tomorrow morning, mm-hmm. do you mind meeting me here at about 8 a.m.? Did you say Josie or Josie and Saren? Josie and Saren. Sure, yeah, we can. I have an idea what is this? for us to get some advertisement out. Jesse's like immediately thinking, like handing out the fucking, what are we, what's the, what's the thing? What's the idea? You'll see you in the morning. You must go. It's starting to get pretty late. What time is it, like, right now? It's about 7.30, okay, so yeah. you think the sun's about to go down. And she's like, all right, we'll have the, have the same Take your scripts, memorize them, spend some how time. How big are they? Yourself. I don't know how big they are. Um, they are that thick. Oh, that's not worse. <laughs> so, and a lot of it's sheet music, so it's not not too bad. She's, like, reading it like it's normal, and Saren's like, how the fuck do you read this? Saren's like, hey. Is there something wrong, Saren? No. <laughs> She's trying not to laugh. No, not at all. I can definitely it's, read this. It's like you can't read sheet music or something. 
Anyway, um, he, you guys head back home, right? Yeah. Um, as soon as you get into the house, you hear a howling outside. Mm-hmm. Seems Leon's like, like you made it home in just the nick of time. And then Leon's like, <laughs> he's, he's me like, I want to touch that window. Don't. Uh, <laughs> Lucian says that. He's like, it's, I'm so curious. No, you should not be curious because you're going to get yourself killed. I have a gun. <laughs> I don't know what a gun is going to do against the Red Death. That's true. What? Uh, he's like, oh, are we all going to the show tomorrow? The the do y'all want to go see the see the some shit and some ghost tale? Um, I don't see why not. Cool. <laughs> what time is it at? It's at. <laughs> it's at six p.m. Okay. What about you, Lucian? Okay. Saren, watch. Saren, go see. And then he's like, "Why not?" <laughs> we Sounds have to be good. somewhere in the morning. Advertisement. Oh. I hope it's nothing ridiculous. I think it'll be hilarious. Yeah, it was funny when he asked you to perform on stage when we were auditioning. Shut up. <laughs> anyway. Lucian's still petty about that. Lucian's like, oh. It's okay, Lucian. Another time you can perform with me. <laughs> when? <laughs> Maybe in the next domain. <laughs> Who knows? There might be an offer there, too. <laughs> Haley, do you want to ask the book question? Um, I want to ask the book... How do we use this the the talisman things? Um, it can take you back to the Miss Talisman page. Um, what it says on the Miss Talisman page is basically all you know. Leon's like, I'm gonna work on my accent if I'm gonna present in court. Yeah. Maybe we should focus on building a case tomorrow. And then we'll also talk to Ebony tomorrow since she'll probably up be up and about, at least relatively by then. I guess we go to bed. Okay, and Sabora's like not Sabora. Jesse's like Sabora, stay with Saren tonight. I was already already planning on it. Sounds good. <laughs> Everyone's in pairs and she's like <laughs> mm-hmm. You all go to bed. Leon's like, I hope I don't. He's like, I hope I don't hear that bottle in my dream again. Um, I want you all to roll natural d twenty. Oh my god, the red death is here. Bruh. It's coming after us. Ah! <laughs> it also comes after Savor. I'm just gonna roll two d twenties on Josie's seat, so so. Uh, Leon, Leon got a six and Josie got an eight. Okay. Eighteen. Okay. Um. Leon just blows up. <laughs> no. Um. Sabora. <laughs> um. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen. It's okay. Uh, as as you're sleeping, you wake up. Um, not. She's in, like, bruh. <laughs> she says, bruh. Not in what seems to be your reality. You're a bit confused, but all around you, all you see is blood. Mm-hmm. Oh. Nice. Does this look like the blood that I was coated with coming out of the portal? Quite eerily, the same. Wow. Julia? <laughs> and your voice echoes, but you hear no response yet. Um, Would you like to walk down this singular path? Yeah, probably. Okay, around you you see a sea of blood, and the sky is red. It looks kind of spooky. looks kind of spooky. Is this is bones sticking out of the ground, and also you see a bunch of ruins everywhere. Uh, no. yeah. Uh, Julia, you sent somebody in your realm. Um, and you sense that they seem to have teleported themselves here. Oh, look at 
you. Becoming so strong already to get over here somehow? Now that's kind of a feature. What does that even do? I don't know. I guess you went to sleep and closed your eyes. Um, Julia, you think, knowing you're a blood god and all, you think because you made a uh, contract with her that she has a stronger presence um, now related to blood gods and blood magic and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so you think that because she made this semi-contract with you, um, that, um, she's starting to show that she's very, very strong with blood magic, or at least has the potential for it. Okay. Um, you'd also know, as Julia, that, um, she's not physically here. It's yeah. just her brain in a way her soul yeah. essentially is visiting it seems like she wanted to be somewhere else oh, that's so funny or here for she's some reason she's not that telling us where she's potential <laughs> <laughs> you know it's kind of amazing you made it here but you know you're still not strong enough but that's what the contracts are for the more contracts you have with me the stronger and stronger you can become the more contracts I have with you? Oh, yeah. That's how it works. The more contracts you make with me, the stronger you become. So strong that anything that stands in your way, you can just snap your fingers and die. So one is not all-encompassing? Oh, no. That's just one. Other blood hunters have many with me. So what does ours say? Her. I'm still working on that. It's a blank contract, so I just decide whenever I feel like it. Okay, for right now I'm busy with other matters. <laughs> um, the one that I made with Quill, um, can I alter that? Can I get rid of that? How does that work? You can get rid of it. All I have to do is burn the paper that, or whatever you wrote on. I guess so your cloth. Just burn it. I guess she stuffed it in her pocket or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. All you have to do is just burn it. Okay. That's it. I just don't have really any use for her. I just wanted to get her out. Well, now you know how to use them, though. Maybe you can use them against your friends. I mean, for the benefit of your brains. Mm-hmm. Seeing her in person, she looks kind of creepy. Yeah, she sees me. <laughs> she's creepy. Is there like a body under there or something? Well, just kind of in the mud. I have a body in and all, but you know, I prefer this one a little better. Oh. Yeah. Julia, huh? <laughs> What's wrong? I feel like you should be saying that to him. <laughs> Even like that to it towards a blood guy. Oh, what? I'm just having fun. <laughs> uh, Julia, you have a thought, and it's to ask her what exactly powers or whatnot she wants from you. You know, since we're all here together and all, mm-hmm. you know, what is it exactly you want from me? I mean, I could cater to your needs. I just need to know what they are. And what she's willing to sacrifice in exchange. And how much you're willing to give up for those things. What's the what's the line, the boundary? Um I'm trying to find my husband. Oh, I know that. <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah. I can help you with that, but I need specific what kind of powers do you want? What are you looking for? So Julia, you do know her wants. You can't see her memories. But you can sense what she wants or yeah. things that she thinks uh, as since she's gotten into the domains of dread. Yeah. So you don't know who her husband is. But she wants to find her husband. Yes. But yeah. you know that she wants to find her husband. You can hear some thoughts, but a lot of the time it is static. Okay. So you don't know too, too much about her, but you know enough. But it's enough to like ask stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I heard you're looking for your husband, right? Domains of dread and all. That's why you're there. You know, what do you want my power? What do you want in order to help find your husband? I guess is a better question. And so, Bora, as a DM, I'll let you know. You can ask anything of Julia, as mm-hmm. long as it's in the realms of blood magic. Okay. She can give you any kind of power you want. At a cost. Um, yeah. I just need, I need to kill people. You need to kill people? Mm-hmm. What's relatively easy. <laughs> That's good at least. Yeah. Um I have my eyes on Sager Dehamir. 
Stranger Things later. Hmm. I need. I'm assuming she has a this talisman and I need it. So something to, I guess, fool Sadra and Mary. Sure. I haven't even met her yet, so I don't know what what's up with that. Well, do you plan to meet her soon? This coming Saturday. And I guess you'll find out there. And you can call upon me at that moment. Hmm. When you find out what you need, of course, in order to work against her. Yeah. Um, she's, she's vain, I'm pretty sure. Um, Julia, uh, based on what she said, and knowing that she said that she is fine with, she wants to kill her, is mm-hmm. what she said. Yeah. You have a lot of ways in which you could kill somebody as a blood hunter. Mm-hmm. She needs to be more specific. Yeah. Well, then how do you want to kill her? Mm-hmm. Destroy her. Destroy her, and then rip her limb to limb, tear her eyes. Suck all the blood out of her? I haven't decided yet. There's <laughs> a lot of options. A lot of torture. Mm-hmm. You know, the simplest way would be is if she signed a contract with you, you could grant her the power to, if she got one drip of a person's blood, she could kill them. That'd be fun. Well, you could get what, give me one drip of her blood and she'll instantly be dead. But now, I need to know what you're willing to sacrifice. Um, what, what would you want? Hmm. I what mean, do I have to give you that? I mean, the people around you seem interesting enough. Or are they off limits? Off limits. How sad. <laughs> Could have been that not too bad. Let's see. What else? What can I do? from Sabora. Um, you think the best thing you could get from her is if it came down to it and you needed help, whatever that help may be, she had to agree. Mm. So if I give you this power to kill her in a split second, right? Mm-hmm. And this would only be applicable to one person. Sounds good. So you'd only, and I'm telling this to support specifically. So if you do this, this contract, she's mm-hmm. basically giving you the power to once any singular person, you get one drip of their blood and you say, Julia, this is the one. They'll drop dead. And then that's basically the end of Julia's dead bargain. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what she, her end of the bargain, which she'll explain. Yeah. Um, but as DM, I want to explain it. If she asks you, and it's only going to be once, if she asks you for help, you have to say yes. Okay. Only in one instance will she ever ask for help, and you have to say yes. Okay. And then that's so. basically that both the ends would be done. That's if they'd ask the end. Yeah. So as Julia, you can say that. So, sometimes you ask gods need help, right? So I'm thinking that if I give you this power... And you use it whenever it's ready. It's just it's basically indefinite, you know, one use only. Mine mm-hmm. is going to be one use only. So if I ask for help, you have to do whatever it is. Okay. Um, my only thing is that I I don't want it to have to deal with my family, anyone that I care actually care about. It won't. That's fine. <laughs> It'll be in parentheses. And this help can't have to do with hurting anybody that yeah, she no, loves. Yeah, no, Julia was already going to say... Nope, nope, they're not going to be involved at all. Okay. Um, do you already have a plan for this favor, or? No, it's whatever I want. Okay. At any point. So it could be before I decide to use my end of the deal? Oh, yes, it can. And it comes to be used after. Okay. Or during. <laughs> I think it's fine. At any point. Would you like to make the deal? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Also, you do not have to do this with Sadra specifically. That could be it. I realize that. Yeah. yeah. It could be with any person or it. any Dark Lord. You could save it for like, I don't know, a million people later. Um, <laughs> it will preface, though, in this thing um, that it actually has to be some sort of corporeal being. Like, it can't be like a it has to be someone spirit. Who, it has to be someone yeah. who bleeds. Someone who's real and bleeds. Yeah. yeah. Um, and even if it is like a ghost figure kind of thing, it could still technically count long yeah. as it gives off some kind of something. Life fluid. 
Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but um, anything more powerful than <gasps> Julia, this will also not work on. Is also worthy note. You can't just go up to some god. <laughs> you can't go up to Lathander and be like. <laughs> I can't go up to Cerberus and be like. Yeah. Imagine going up to Diablos and being like. Yeah, hey, like. And she oh just looks at you like. Because it has to be in the realm of Julia's capabilities, because it's Julia basically doing it for you. Right. Julia's strong, but she's also like, if you consider, she's like a demigod. Yeah. But like a minor demigod. You know, that's how the false. Currently, is. she is stronger than Lucian, though. Yeah. Yeah. And then she'll fall for grace <laughs> real hard. But no. Anyway, after <laughs> so after she I, says that, so um, I feel like she's gonna fall from grace soon or something. After like she that. says that and explains um, the intricacies of this to you, do you take the deal? Okay. okay. You okay. see Julia pull out a, a big old scroll, and so um, <laughs> she doesn't even have to like draw blood or anything. You see her hold up a quill, and blood just comes out from the little fucking ocean, and goes and goes on to the quill and she writes it and she lets you look at it and you see that it says everything that I as DM have told you um, and the intricacies of it. Uh, she hands you the quill and you okay. sign your name and there is no going back. Okay. It You see that it is unlike the contract that you made with um, Quill, this one is ingrained permanent. Well. Don't forget that if you want to end the contract with Quill, you just have to burn the cloth you wrote it on. Okay. And Julia will also mention that this contract cannot be undone. The one with her. Until we use it, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see you, I guess, another day. And when you wave goodbye, you go... <laughs> and uh, you're asleep in bed. Still. Yeah, you're like, you're still asleep. Enter the room. What the fuck is this? Like, oh, <laughs> um, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josie, mm. you uh, appear in a bright white place. Um, with, what the fuck? With some um, sparkly like blue. And like alone, alone. <laughs> Sorry. with some sparkly blue like arcana kind of magic. Um, you sense heavy Lathander presence here, but you also sense heavy Shar presence here. He's like, hello. And you look around and you see Lucian next to you, and he's like, Oh my god, what? <laughs> Hi, mom. Hey, hey, sweetie. Um, what, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> she's like, he's like, I don't really know. Um, he still seems a he he still seems a little solemn, but not as solemn anymore. What's what's, what's Shard doing around here? He's like, I don't know. I don't really. Can she like Arcana check the Shard energy? Mm-hmm. It's a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I know Lathander, but a nat twenty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is Shard's energy, but it's a little different. She's like, this energy feels different from the Shard that we. Yeah, it feels a little, yeah. And um, you see before you um, Lathander. He stands, but he's staticky almost. That's scary. Yeah. And so like, it's like he glitches like yeah. a hologram. And you see um, this other woman who feels a lot like Char, but isn't Char, mm-hmm. standing next to him, also staticky. Just like, oh, what is going on? Glitchy. <laughs> and um y'all uh Lathander says um he tries to give a sentence but it comes off staticky um and so all you hear is remember mm-hmm. lives not real <laughs> oh shit sure. And I want you to make a constitution save. Oh, she has plus one. So, like, there's not... She got a 19. (laughs) I mean, 20. Unnatural 20. She's like... For what almost feels like a split second, you feel like your entire life's been a lie. Josie's like, oh, no. (laughs) 
Um, let me see what other shit he gets. Did not get high. Um, oh, he, no, he's, good. he's like, he's like, what? No, not just. He's like really like. Yeah, you're sitting there and you think your entire life's a lie. You think every memory you've ever had has been fabricated and you don't know why. You don't know how you why got here. Always... You don't understand anything that's happening. Mary, why is it always Leon and Josie that are the ones that have to like be like the first ones to be like... <laughs> and the the other, uh, the Shar woman looks at you and she says... Um, at your face. Cerberus. Remember before. Oh, God. And, um, and then he, and then she also continued. She seems to say something to Lathander in a minute. I'm on, she's like, blah, 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 blah. And you hear, <laughs> as she does. And then she looks back at you guys and she says, um, Start with one. And Lathander says, one memory, one dream. And Lucian's like, I don't know what the fuck is happening. No, Josie's like about to like have a panic attack. She's like, she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to make in. Another one. <laughs> Another one. I want you to make a. Uh... Another one. Another one. I want you to make a wisdom check. A wisdom check. What is this right here? 14. You think. That Lathander and this woman are, for one, telling you the truth. And they're yeah, giving yeah. you very valuable advice. But um, you think what he's trying to explain to you is that uh, these dreams, the dream you had, for example, you need to start unpacking that in whatever way possible first. Mm -hmm. And understand that. And that might be the key to whatever he's trying to get you to understand. Yes. Um, and you you see them get a, a more staticky. Mm -hmm. And Lucian is just like, what the fuck is going on? Josie's like, fuck. Yeah, no, they get more staticky as you guys are as you guys are standing there. Um, the Bluetooth device is right ready here. to pair. And then I'm like, the oh, Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Okay. Hello. No. Hello. You don't want to see that? Hello. No. Hello. There you go. The high one would crack me up. Hello. Okay. Um. And you hear um a voice say to you both, very crisp and very clear. Oh, there you are. Um, and then, uh, you feel a very sinister energy around you, and you're like, oh, no. Like, I'm still trying to unpack, like, the first, the first thing. <laughs> and you hear, you see Lathander and, uh, Char, or the Char person try and say something else, um, but they're, they're, it becomes blank around you, just black uh -oh. darkness. And Lucian's like, I'm sorry, the five night of Freddy. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> the lights. <laughs> uh, power goes out. Power goes out, actually. Power goes out. Just for comprehension, I'm going to change it one more time. Do. Do. That one. I'll do this one so you can actually understand me. Try the Omega Party. <laughs> um, Prepare to die. Prepare to die. <laughs> Um, but after the voice says, I found you, um, I think it's funny, um, you, everything goes black around you, and you and Lucian are just standing there, and you're like, and she's like, oh no, and, um, 
The voice says, I can't have you remembering that quickly. And, um, Josie, you wake up. And Josie's like... And for some reason, you feel like you're forgetting something. And then she rolls them to try to remember. (laughs) Yeah, you can make a con save. Oh, God, no. Actually, wisdom save. Wisdom saves? Oh, God. 23. You feel like somebody tried to wipe your memory. Oh my god, I did of, it. Of this dream of sorts. And she remembered But she you dreamed? remembered. She's gonna go have an extra person. And <laughs> you remember Lathander and this Char woman saying, you have to remember and that you have to start with one memory that this is all basically fake. Cerebrus? Doesn't remember that Josie punched Abaddon in the fucking face. <laughs> and succeeded in punching him. I think, was Lucian awake or is he just like chilling? Yeah, he woke up too. And he looks at you and he goes, Josie's literally Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I think I'm just, I'm gonna go get a water, Lucian. I'm, I'm... I'll come with you because Sabora got kidnapped last night. Like, that's, 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 it's like she, I think she can't hear her words out. She's like, I'm just, I'm just gonna get one. <laughs> she, he follows her. And he's like, Are you okay, Mom? Mm, no. Did, did you, you have a bad dream? <laughs> did you dream of anything? No. Oh, he failed his wisdom save. Oh, no, I want to know what Lathander's like after that happened. Lathander's <laughs> talking to Millennia. He's like, My son doesn't even remember. He's like, We did all of that, and Lucian doesn't even remember, but somehow Josie. Remembers. I mean, did you see what Leon's Fucking face plumbing. when he looked at the cards? Like, how did he figure it out? What are the Eldershires on? I mean, you're the one that chose him to be your followers. Well, Leon, I don't know. It was a choice. <laughs> you decided, oh, let's go after the girl that her parents died and she raised three other kids and the guy who was a drug addict for 30 years. Yeah, I did that, huh? You did do that. I did. <laughs> you did do that. Well, would, um, you, would you not want them in there in, the, in your life? No. Exactly. <laughs> it's like how I said about Ophelia. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes back to our boobies. Yeah, and Jesse's. Um, I think Jesse's like just like. Uh, Lucian is going to make another wisdom save, to see if he can. Oh, oh, oh shut up at thirty. <laughs> Please, as Joe seen him are sitting around. He remembers and then some. But he didn't, like, could do the con save, but he does remember the dream. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, he he didn't have to do the con save. It was oh. a wisdom save to remember the dream. Oh, he didn't okay. have to do the con save, though. Okay. Um, That's Because he's magical. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no. He... No, he did the con save. He failed it. Yeah. Um, I, did it I did some of these previously. Um, he did the con save and failed it. He, he didn't get, like... The message that Josie no. got. But he still remembers the dream. Mm-hmm. Like, the overall dream. Um, yeah, no. He, he remembers, he's like, I saw, I saw my dad. And yeah. the, some, some other woman. That, yeah, that wasn't Shaw. <coughs> no. Sorry. I don't know. Doesn't and then, and then something, something was like... I, I found you. That was uh, that, that had to be Cerberus. And you can't remember yet. It had to be Cerberus. Remember what? Remember. <laughs> she's 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 literally. You can make any kind of roll you want. For what? Anything. Like what do you mean? What kind of roll does Josie need to make? What kind of roll does Josie want to make right now? Just history check on the burning house and her, I guess the memory. Okay. She didn't do that well. She got an eight. It was your house. Okay, she knows that was that. And you know that was Saren, and you know that was Sabora, but... Can she make an investigation check in her mind? Can she make a, a save of some sorts? Or a regular check with another stat? Maybe her intelligence save? <laughs> Uh, you can think back to that memory. Okay. Um, and you think back to it, and it it comes to you sort of like a dream, mm-hmm. as you remember it. 
Um, and as you sit there remembering it, I want you to make a con save. <laughs> Don't do this to heart. I can't be put to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to say, is this going to put me to sleep? She only got a three. You feel a crippling headache. Yeah. Jesse like heaves over in pain. <laughs> and Lucian's like, oh my god, oh my god, what is happening? What what is going on? My head hurts. Why is your head hurting? I'm trying to think back to the Don't dream. think back if it hurts. <sighs> Just give me a second. I can I'm gonna try again. <laughs> <laughs> she literally was the one. Okay, you can make another concert. She's like, this is just will be her second one, that's it. I'm that one! You pass out. Oh, she passes out. <laughs> um, Poor Lucian. Lucian screams, bloody murder. He's like, Mom! <laughs> And everyone wakes up with so Lucy screaming at the top of his lungs. And he's like, Mom! Mom! Wake up, Mom! 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 So he's like, help! 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 What happened? He's like, so we had we had a dream. Like it was like a joint dream. It was a weird dream. And there was a thunder, and then there was um um a shark kind of lady. And um they they told us some stuff. I couldn't really hear a lot of it, but I tried. Um, but they 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 were like she said that they said something like remember or something and like memories or something <laughs> and like stuff like that. And then Cerberus and then uh some a Cerberus. Cerberus. Um, there was a word a Cerberus that yeah. And then, and then we heard like, oh, um, I I found you. And then, then we then we heard um, you can't remember yet. And then we woke up. And then I was like, what? what, what? And she was like, I remember something. And then I was like, what? What do you what, what, what? And then I was like, oh my god, I do remember the dream. That's crazy. And then and then we came down here. And then she was like, I'm thinking back to the memory. And then I was like, what memory? I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And then she was like, I'm back. And, then, and then he was. And then she was like, I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back. And then she was like, she was like, oh 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 in her head. And then I was like, what? And then she passed out. Um. And Leon's like, I think this has to do with our memory things. I'm gonna think back to. <laughs> and for some reason, I don't think Cerberus wants us to. Get these Can we start thinking back to the bottles? Mm-hmm. He's gonna be like, the bottles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Make a um, wisdom check or save. Oh god. And um, Lucian will also. He got a five. <laughs> we suck. He got a five. Um, you have no clue what they're talking about memories, but like that was a dream. They're fucking crazy. He's like, huh. And Lucian's like. Lucian was like, I, for some reason, I feel like it was really real killing. What was your dream? I killed uh, Char. I believe it. I, well, I, it felt real, but we didn't live that. And now Josie's knocked out. Um, Josie. Oh, God. Uh, you see the same little girl. Oh with no, brown it's scary. hair and brown eyes standing She's before like, you. Who are and you? And she looks at you. <laughs> I need to remember you. She tilts her head. Um, um, voice um, can she can she think can she think like about making um intelligence save. For once we'll use our intelligence save. <laughs> She's not doing well today. She had a four. She's like, I'm trying to think of you. Who are you? She seems static, you know. God. And you feel like the memory of her is fading. She's like, no, 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 I can't. I'll have to hold off on this then. <laughs> and um, you hear her, she looks at you and she says, you really don't remember me? I want to. Then do it. Fucking hell. That is something she was doing. She, <laughs> yeah! She's like, what, what are you afraid of? I guess forgetting you. Are you? I, I am. Or are you afraid of being a bad mom? She's like, I guess... She, I don't know if she'd feel like she's being a bad mom now, but back then she's like, why did this feeling come to me? 
Did she ch- check on that feeling? Because mm-hmm. she doesn't feel it now. Yeah. But, like, that's a definitely a long time, like, past her. Mm-hmm. What does she do have to do to check? Like, maybe a history? Insight? I'm going to say a charisma check. Charisma. Because I'm going to correlate feelings, EQ, to charisma. Okay. 21. Uh, you think it has to do, and it stems from that memory of the house fire. And you do solidly think that that was a memory. Oh, yeah. she's like, was I a bad mom back then? You thought you were. Guess you'll have to remember if you want to know if you were. Well, I'll come back for you. Yeah, she takes the static he draws me. Um, you take a couple steps towards her, and she's like, are you sure you want to do this? If it means what Lathander, Millennia, and everything that's been going on. Millennia. You don't know Millennia? Oh, well, sorry. Whoever that girl was. Um, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Then, then I will, if it means protecting everyone. It's a burden to remember. Everyone else forgot. I guess someone has to someone somewhere, huh? <laughs> At least someone has to remember. And she, she'll, she'll definitely take me. Okay. Oh, God. I'm a vampire! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> I'm a vampire! I was disabled! <laughs> I want you to make a... I want you to make every save. Oh God! This is Every gonna be sad. Bad. Everyone. This is so, gonna be so bad, Mary. One of each. Do it one at a time. Okay, charisma twenty three. We'll stop at charisma first. Okay. Um, every emotion you have ever had, both past, present, and future, comes swarming back to your mind. Oh. You remember all of your feelings that you've ever had, even the ones that you thought were fake. In these dreams. So that means she has better advantages on her dreams. And you remember all of the feelings of being a bad mom. You remember all of the feelings of if you've ever felt like you weren't good enough. If you ever felt like you made a mistake. Guilty. Anything. You remember yes. those feelings. Yes. Um, I'd like you to make another save. You can choose which one you want to do next. This wisdom. 25. Well, those um, are to her two highest, like, advantage rolls, so. Yep. <laughs> um, you start to see memories. No, that's the two important shit. Appear. And they begin to piece themselves together um, and start to come with the feelings. You start to pair memories with feelings. No, that's kind of... <laughs> and it's almost like you have two sets of memories and feelings of two different lives in your yes. head. Nasty. Ooh. Make another one. Alright, well this is where it gets bad. Which one? <laughs> this is where it gets real bad. Which one are you doing? Seven for intelligence. You don't know which one's reality and which one's not. Oh, that's the tough part. But she'll definitely be questioning everything for sure. Mm-hmm. Con save now. Sixteen. Oh, seventeen. Nice. Um... Is it possible she would be able to make that in check at a later time if things start getting crazy again? You think the more dreams and stuff you have of these memories and everything, you think the more you'll be able to? Do you think the covered saves would already be applied to those? Yes. What you have remembered and what you now know is permanent. Okay, let me... Write. Because um, the conversation with Luthander and Millennia, which I'm telling you it's DM... The convert with Lathander and Millennia, the fact that you remembered it and also got Lucian to remember it, um, is what started all of this because you trust Lathander even in this timeline, yeah. um, in this run of events. So hearing him say, you need to remember, start with one memory, made you do so, you did, then you passed the fuck out. And then now she's basically getting the save done for mm-hmm. these other memories. We'll come back to the con save because you did succeed it. Um, do Dex for me. <laughs> <laughs> a nineteen, a twenty, nice. a twenty, because a plus one. And make a strength save, and I'll come back to that one. A two. 
Okay. Um, you, everyone who's looking at Josie, her appearance oh, changes no! before your eyes. Not her vampire self! Um, <laughs> she has red eyes now and black hair. She's getting her emo phase back. Yes, Abora. And like, you see, oh. you see her mouth slightly open, and you see fangs. And you, Sabora, you'd know that this looks a lot like Strahd did <gasps> the last time you saw him, which is weird. Leon. And um. <laughs> oh God, Josie. Josie, you wake up because you saved on the con save. Good for you. <gasps> um, and. You are fully able to move and everything because you saved on the deck save. I wonder what that strength save Without any either. problems or anything. Um, would you like to get up? She cannot move. She's going to try. Yeah, you get up. Um, you feel extremely weak. Yeah, she... And you feel like you need blood. Oh, no. She's like... Can she think back on to the blood thing? And see you know like, that in one reality, you're a vampire. Okay, so she's like, she kind of has like, oh, I can take that and apply that and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So like, you know what is or could be a reality if you have solid proof of it. If you don't, you can't tell the difference. Okay, and right now her solid proof is right now she's a vampire. Right now you have a craving for blood. And she's like, can she look at herself in a mirror? So it's it's not like you see these no. like two no, you can't see a mirror, so you don't know what you look like. Oh my different. god, that's gonna be so funny. Um <laughs> so you're sitting here and it's like in your mind you have two memories of two lives. Yeah. But they're not on two lines. It's yeah. like they're merged together. Oh god, that's gonna be So funny. it's essentially like you can't tell the real memories from the fake ones. So it's not like you're like, ah, okay. I'm a vampire, so this is the right reality. It's like Oh, I'm a vampire, but also I bird leaf, but also I I am married, but, but also is, I'm yeah, but this exactly. But happened, that has happened, but then that. Mm-hmm. So she's like, I need blood. What? I need blood. Someone give me something in the blood. <laughs> I don't know. God. Uh. Everyone's like. <sighs> and Leon's like, okay. <laughs> I guess what? And Leon like slices his wrist. And he puts over a cup, basically. What's going on? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. She needs blood. <laughs> Why are you just giving her blood? I'm putting it in the cup. <laughs> no, it's like, that's not the issue. Leon's <laughs> 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 no, literally like that. Yeah. Archeon, Archeon's just like. <laughs> just like Leon's blood, basically. You feel a lot better, Josie. He's like. And you feel like this fog that was over your mind previously is lifted. She's like... But you think you're a lot more confused now. Yeah, she's like... And you feel like your brain is, like, extra full. Like, you feel like it's it's over compact size. Does Jessie see, like, a reflection in the mirror? Like, she goes somewhere to, like, look at herself or something? You don't see yourself in the mirror. She's like... Yeah, y- 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 you don't see it either, so you're like... Everyone's just like... And Jesse's like, what do I even look like? <laughs> and she's a little more. You have black hair. Black hair. And red eyes. And fangs. <laughs> I would, I would even say you are a vampire. You look like Strahd did when he got kidnapped. Can she, can she think about the vampire thing? <laughs> well, you know that in one of the realities, Strahd's a vampire. Okay. So that that's that sounds a little familiar to you. And she's like, okay, Strahd was a vampire. And you know, in some reality, you became a vampire because of Strahd. I I'm gonna go to my room. I need to write a lot of stuff down. I am very overwhelmed. I'm going to go upstairs. Okay. Lucian, Lucian says, wait, what? What did? What did you? What did you? You passed out. Are you okay? Well, then you're not okay. But are you okay? Like, what did you think about? Uh, what did you dream about? I, there's, there's, there's so much. I, I can't, I can't even start. I, I. But you do remember the little girl's name. Oh! <laughs> she's like, I. <laughs> she, she 
she's literally like. And you remember that in a reality, you do have a daughter named Luna. And she's my daughter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what she's in a different reality. She's like. Yeah, but you don't know if that's yeah, the reality yeah, or this like, is the reality. She's like, I, there's so much to explain right now, but I don't, I, Lucian, that dream we had, right? Yeah. That was, that was real. That was. When we looked the under? Yes, and this other shot. Yeah, I kind of, I felt it, it said, was real, kind of. to me, one memory, one dream at a time. Yeah. So they said we had to remember and we had to unpack them. Yeah. Or else sir, some big person will win, some evil person will win. Cerberus, that's what they said. A Cerberus. And, I, and they, Cerberus, I think, tried <gasps> to get rid of our memory of that dream. Yeah. No. Yeah, I remember that. So I went back and tried to unpack the dream, mm-hmm. and I maybe know a lot more, or I'm confused still, but I know things, and I, I it's hard to to, to differ, differentiate each of each of them. Hmm. Uh, you see Lucian think for a minute, and he's like, "So what was the memory that you could back on the memory?" She's like having a PTSD episode. She's like, <laughs> she's like, there was a house. It was my house. It was on fire. Lay and... down. I guess we'll have to take a break because he probably has to shit. Like asshole. Bro, I fucking. No, because we're being like, do y'all pee? That must be like a. Would you mind taking a break so he can go yeah. shit? As long as he actually shits. <laughs> Instead of goes into the trash can. Don't put him in the cage first so they can get out the door. Or that's fine enough.
because it was made of silver. Mm -hmm. But now they actually can because mirrors are made with aluminum nowadays. Wow. wow. And then so we were like, well, we'll never be able to tell a vampire. And I, Haley said, I'm just going to stake you. Steak and I said, way. just throw some garlic in their face. Like, <laughs> and I said, I couldn't become a vampire because I would never be able to have garlic again. That would be so sad. <laughs> that, that's I need to ask be. a question. Because mm -hmm. Josie was immune to the sun when she was previously a vampire. Mm -hmm. Is she still immune now? <laughs> Even though I know it's not really sunny ever in these realms. You can test it. It's not sunny right now, so she can't really test You know that the reason that you could also do that is because the light of Lathander was on you. Yes, I don't know if this is a different light. Um, and you know the reason Strahd used to be able to, in a reality, when he was a vampire, yeah, this is just for um, was because he had a ring. Yeah, this is just for Jacqueline's sake to make ring? sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, later he ended up getting a ring from um, Lathander, because he couldn't actually have Lathander's light on him. Yeah. Oh, um, and so... I was just making sure it's Jacqueline because I just want to know how to act if I get into like real sun. Like, um, Josie would think she potentially could if she is a vampire. She won't test it. <laughs> she, she just would. <laughs> but um, he says Lucian says in response because you told him about your well, he saw fire her dream. Part he was just saying there was a house that was on fire. That was the dream you told us about. Yes, and then so you're saying you thought back to that dream. I did. And hmm. I learned I feel like a bad mother. <laughs> or joke because she does have the emotion. She's like something about feeling like a terrible mother. That's bullshit. <laughs> That's Samora me. Yeah. <laughs> it was You're a good mom. A dream. You were there, Samora. You were young. So were you, Saren. And there was this other other girl named Luna. I don't remember being in a burning house. I want you Luna. to make a constitution save. Does Leon get to make one? No. Yes. Because he's his best friend. Everyone gets to no. make a con save. <gasps> con save for everybody. Oh, what are you doing? Nine. You have no clue what the fuck a Luna is. I got a, 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 I got a, Leon got a 10. You also have no clue what the fuck a Luna is, but you <laughs> also did not have this yeah, he Luna didn't person in your memory. He did it, so he doesn't really know. Um, Archeon's gonna try with the con save. I don't... Archeon says... Oh, I did. I did. Archeon says, um... I remember the name, and I... <laughs> Brown hair and brown eyes. Yeah, you know, sure. Uh, Josie's like, yes. She was my dream, too. And I was like, I am a dream like that. That was... Hmm. Then I was like, I dreamt I was dying. <laughs> uh, you what? Yeah, I was dying, and you were telling me not to die, and then I died, and then a bottle was in front of me, and I was alive. <laughs> I died? <laughs> I was not to die, but I died. <laughs> Okay, oh, that's so fucking funny. No, because I really don't even say it. <laughs> Let me make a con save for Saren. Uh, with advantage, because actually he did... I was going to say... Luna. Holy okay, that advantage really came through. Um, he goes... Luna. And Josie said yes. And he... He's, he seems to... Hmm? Pick... Like, he seems to have more thoughts than he's actually vocalizing on the name. Yeah, no, she's like, just waiting. And he's, he's like, I feel like we were related. But does Jesse know they were? Or is she, she's like, in a reality. She's like, I have these two versions of realities in my head, Saren. And I, I need to piece these together, but maybe at another time. But you, you were related. Let's speed run. <laughs> it's all because you fucking remembered the fucking dream with fucking. It's always me. It's always Josie. Josie's the one. Leon's that she... just gonna be stupid, apparently. Uh, hey, Taryn. Um. Taryn, she's like she's my half sister. Yes. Um. I raised well. Mostly raised you and her, and I raised Sabora too. And what the fuck? 
like, yeah, you have no clue what's happening, Sabora. You're like, you talking some nonsense. <laughs> Even though you called Josie mommy multiple times. <laughs> no thoughts, just do. Mother. That's funny. Um, and... Strahd was your half-brother, though. What? Huh? That's what I kind of can remember. Strahd was sort of... It was really weird. It was really, really weird. I... He was your brother, but not your brother? That sounds impossible. It does sound impossible. Um. What time is it? It is late, late at night. It's like... Midnight. Yeah. Um, and you guys were asleep, but then you all got up when, you know, all this shit happened. Um, and Saren, um, if you remember him saying he had memories, dreams of Luna. Yeah. Um, and you tell him, Luna, and you tell him a little bit about her, and he goes into a sort of, like, trance-like state. Mm -hmm. Um, you think it was, would have been... What you would have had would have happened to you if, if you I say it on my pants. Um, so we'll see how Siren does. I guess Josie and Siren are in it together. Yet again, uh, you don't con Christmas save like a bitch. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, he has all his feelings. That's for fucking sure. Um, he has a good portion of his memories, like yeah, most of them. That's good. Um, and save. Hey, me too. He isn't 100% sure which are the real ones, but he's a li- got a little more of an inkling to it than you. I was going to say a little more sure than Josie is. Yeah. <laughs> hey. He's wide awake. He's <laughs> dancing straight <laughs> Um... Okay. Please, Jesus, you be the one. Okay. Um. You. It's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> He's awake. How does he swear? He has he awake. Like that? He can't Please. Again. Tell you... me because I'm doodle. Yeah, he he seems to not be able um, to use his limbs properly right now. He's still he's trying to relearn how his body parts work. And Jesse's like, uh, Come because on. you guys see new scars appear on him, mm-hmm. and you see he looks a little more worn and uh, wear and tear than previous Aaron, um, and. He seems like he's trying to re get a hold of yeah. these new feelings. Just he's like, body just he's like helping him, like being like trying to get him steady. And he's like, Saren. Oh no! <laughs> they both look at each other like, what the fuck is happening? What the fuck is happening? A lot. Why is she? Re- She's. No, but I think we're the first two. Ironic since you play in the opera, huh? <laughs> That's what she literally says. Oh, which one's real? No, which she's which like, ones are real? I don't know yet, and that's what I'm gonna try to figure out. But I, we ha- I have them, and you have them, so I guess we have to try. After all, Lathander said one at a time. We have to remember, and I don't know. Yet, but I trust Lathander, so <laughs> going to be thinking, I guess, constantly. And Sabor's like, huh? Lucian gets a shot because of the Lathander and what you said, so yeah. he's gonna try a hand with consciousness. He passes out. <laughs> he's Amelia! <laughs> he goes, <coughs> and Josie's like, what is the you actual know, fuck? In the other reality, he wasn't like born from Shin. Sarah's like, he looks the same. He was born from you in that reality. Or no, he was born from Shemai, you're right. Yeah, and, and, and I guess we'll do we'll one and Be two. Yours. We'll do one and two. How about that? So reality one is one, 
Right, like... But that's hard because we don't know which one's one and two and which one is right and which one is wrong. Well... Because as we said, yeah. they're not straight lines. She's so like, it's all she's together. Like, no, she's like trying to sort them into it. Now she does another one. So she's like trying to sort them into one and two. That's what she's trying to do. So Bora's gonna start ignoring you guys. She's like, okay, fuck this shit. He's gonna, she's gonna like try and gather up Lucian and try and like... You know, she's like, she's like, no, Sabora. You have, look, you have to remember. Strahd said to remember, right? In your yeah. Game, right. Uh huh. Then maybe you can try it like we did. Oh God. Okay. You can try, but I don't know where to start with your memory. Yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> she. Noticing how, like, almost everyone's passing down, she's gonna actually sit down on the couch. Lucian fucking bolts <laughs> up. He goes... <laughs> and, like, his eyes glow a fucking bright orange. And she's like... Okay. Um, and you see the brightest aura surround him. And you guys feel, damn, can, that bitch is, like, Lathander energy can incarnate. Josie, since this is happening, can Josie get, like, another, like... <sighs> dig back into the memories because everyone's like kind of like we got two people that technically transformed back and yes you can two. tell which forms for the most part are the ones that you see before you okay um and lucian looks a lot more solemn now yeah as he as he looks at you guys and he seems a lot less happy-go-lucky um and he That's goes fair. What's happening? Josie's like, that's what I want to know. She's like, I'm trying to still piece it together. Did you piece it together? Vaguely. Um, he thinks he got really fucking high on everything. Good. Um, he is. He he says, why do we have fake memories? Josie's like, I don't know. I I I, I don't know. You know which ones are real and fake, right? I still can't tell. I need help. <laughs> well, I know. Um, and he, he explains vaguely um, to you. And I'll let you make one more intelligence oh, save. Oh, God, Mary, please don't do this to me. She sucks. Can she cast something on herself? And Saren will try another intelligence Can she save. actually cast something on herself? No. Nope. Nope. Damn it. Saren gets it. Damn it, Jesse got a nine. You still can't tell the difference. It's too hard. She can at least pick them. Like you can, t- you can. Un- he, they can't tell you your entire life story. Yeah. But you can, in- like, infer. But the issue is, is that your brain isn't com- computing it. Mm-hmm. Like they can tell you this is your reality, but the other reality just mm-hmm. feels just as real, and it feels just as right. Mm-hmm. So you're having a disconnect mentally. Yeah. Um. And Lucian and Saren look at each other and they're like... Jesse's like, I'm still trying. <laughs> um, and Lucian says... But I this is what the wish did? Josie, does Josie remember a wish? She's like, wish, wish, wish. Shamil made a wish. She did. And then we got here... Why are we... Can Leon try to remember? Leon's like, okay, can someone tell me about what's going on? I don't know. I was dead at one point? <laughs> I'm gonna go pee people. Y'all are having a good like, He's like, okay, what do I need to know? I need to remember. I've been having doubts this whole time. Archeon's like, I do. And and you guys are like, Leon, um, you have nothing that's stuck out to you thus far. So, like, other than, like, I think I died. Yeah. You have nothing that screams, like, I remember. Yeah. Um, like Bartholomew moving, I like, remember. He was like, oh. Yeah, other than Bartholomew, but you haven't seen him pop up or yeah. anything like that yet. Um, and I was gonna let her roll, but um, Sam's like, fucking hell. <laughs> um, if Josie would like to say something to Leon, oh, yeah, no, she no, might Josie's, be able to trigger something. Josie's like, okay, and she's like, looks at Archeon, like, Archeon's like. She looks at both Lucian and... I'm still not clear on why you look like that. She looks at Lucian and Saren like... Um... Lucian's like, where's his bottle? He's like, she's like, I don't know. How is he alive? 
So she's like, should we not? I don't know if I can feel like what Liam has to feel like. I don't think we have a choice. Okay, so Leon, he's like, uh huh. So you, uh, you were my brother in this all re other reality. You left. And after years, we found you again to fight against, I guess. We're doing like our little part. <laughs> Against, you know, Abaddon and all. He's like... <laughs> I'll let Leon make a wisdom save. Good thing it's plus zero. You got a two. He's trying so hard. Though. You... This triggers nothing for you. And, well, there was a bottle that you had. It kept you alive because you died at a camp. And we were there. You tried to save the kids. So he are so Leon failed his wisdom save, so he's not gonna be able to try again. Okay. But this can trigger Archeana memory. Yeah. Um, no, he doesn't get it either. Damn, they're both dumb as hell. Um, they're kind of like, what the fuck? Jesse's like, I don't think they're gonna get it, you two. And Lucian goes, Well so you gotta try again. Hey Sabora, you're a demon hell princess. Yes, and I Technically raised you forever? <laughs> well, I resonate with what you said. That's what I've been saying all along. Um, I want you to make a wisdom save. Because this actually does sound familiar to you. I mean, you had crazy shit about it. That's not what I'm doing. Uh, wisdom save? Mm-hmm. Damn, Let's see if she's I smart. Press nothing to that. Uh, 17. Hey, nice. You feel a bunch of memories come to you. A whole row. A whole lifetime worth. I want you to make a charisma save. Shit. I got an eight. You see, you sense these memories, but you don't sense any feelings that come with them. They're kind of just like a movie you're watching. But they're there, and you feel like you've lived it. Yeah. Make an intelligence check. Or save, sorry. Oh, damn. Nine. <laughs> um, you can't tell which is real. Um, yeah. But given that you have feelings for the one that you're currently in, the fake one, yeah. you're leaning towards that one. Right. Um, make a con save. Thirteen. You don't pass out. <laughs> That's good. Make a deck save. Fourteen. Okay, make a strength save. Uh, unnatural twenty. Um. Ta-da! You're a hell princess. Um, but you're you don't you don't know really how to <laughs> function. You have wings now. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. Oh. No, she's like, seems like she got the opposite of, of what. How does that manifest, either? Uh, they literally, like, like, out of your bones. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Ouch! Uh, yeah, it hurts like a bitch. It hurt for all of you, except for you, Josie, because you were passed out. You just kind of woke up, and you were like... That's why Saren was like... And that's why Lucian, who also passed out, was just like... <laughs> they were just like, oh. But it hurts like a bitch. You're, you're probably screaming in agony. Yeah, probably. And she's like, <laughs> when she's done, she's like, oh my god. That's some transformation. Holy shit. What do you remember? Um, well, I have all these memories, but that's about it. No feelings? Mm. I guess we'll have to keep trying on that one, hmm? Yeah. Okay. I think that's all we can do today, though. Probably. Let's not strain ourselves anymore. Yeah. <sighs> Indeed. He's like, I'm exhausted after that. It's like, so the only two are. What do you think's going to happen when Cerberus finds out? Whoever, whatever Cerberus is. We're in big trouble. What do you think is going to happen when we get to the next 
Oh my god, we're in Ravenloft. Josie's like, no! He's like... Josie's like, oh. And Saren's like... So you're telling me there's an intricate puzzle? (laughs) And Lucian's like, oh my god. Too bad, Lucian. Leah's never been to Ravenloft. (laughs) And he's like, okay. And he's like, that's great. And so that means Strahd was taken to you. Barovia. That means we're going back to Barovia. Oh, at least we know about that room. Yeah. And not like this one. Mm. And he's like, well, he's like, <coughs> if you remember, like, we didn't know the term for it at the yeah. time. I think Jessie but... will just trust Saren and Le- Lucian's judgment because mm-hmm. she's still confused, but she has two people she can trust. Yeah. So she's like, okay, I'm going to take their um, lead. <laughs> and this is the only time this session you guys will be able to make those kind of rolls. Oh, yeah, that's so fair. that's what you've gotten, <laughs> and that's what you've gotten thus far. That's fair. Um, it sucks, Leon. I'm not going to Um. Uh, Lucian says, I don't think we knew what it was called at the time, but no, we no. technically <laughs> had a missed <laughs> talisman when we escaped we Barovia. We had it on us. We didn't know what it did, and we didn't know that that was the key. But after we defeated Strahd, we had, well, the book says it, and he reads it fucking from the book. I forgot what it was, but you fucking, you had it. Um, he was like, we had it on us when we got out. Um, was it the something of Raven kind? Yes. That's exactly what it was. I knew it was Raven kind. I just forgot what it was. Yeah, it's it's like the mark of something like that. Is I it? actually wrote it down. Symbol of Raven kind. I wrote it down. I think it was that. It's like it's like some like Raven kind talisman. It's like mm-hmm. called talisman, like <laughs> talisman. talisman. Yeah. Okay. Um. He's like, yeah, we had the talisman of uh like Raven mm-hmm. Raven kind. That's what got us out, and we got that. Um, from the, the world, from Strahd, it had to do with Strahd, though. So that means that Talisman here had to do would with have to do with Sadra. And, that had to and we got that from um, Strahd's palace. So we'd probably get Sadra's thing from I mean, Sadra's we can't estate. We can't kill her willy-nilly. That work. No, there's a way to kill her. We have to figure it out like we figured out with Strahd. Yes. I mean, I know James said something about um, Sadra being different in the past than she is now. So maybe she got turned into this by something? Maybe a dark gift? Maybe. I think we need to take a rest. What's a dark gift? I think we need to sleep. I think we do too. (laughs) Everyone goes back to sleep and wakes up in the morning. I can't believe that dumbass didn't figure anything out, but what can I expect from that dumbass? Meanwhile, Archeon and fucking Leon go to bed. Leon's like, in the dumbest bitch in yeah, the Yeah, literally. <laughs> I'm the dumbest couple. I'm surprised Archeon didn't figure anything out. They're both like, I don't know what they're on. Yeah, we're just chilling. Um, no, which through, is so funny. We literally could have gotten through Leon's addiction phase in two seconds and he would have been fine. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't have that happen, though. Um, well, also, you don't, you know, we know as player in DM that Leon is supposed to have a phase, uh, and then Grillin Tower is supposed to talk to him, and then the bottle is supposed to appear. He's going to be the last one. Um. At this point. <laughs> um, but you don't know. How much Leon would have remembered. You don't know how this is going to work. Yeah. Because you remember right now. But, we don't know but how Cerberus long. also knows you remember. And so she could, you could just forget again. It's funny. Potentially. Maybe Justin would just be a bomb ass bitch and just kill all 26 again. And Cerberus is like, ah. Because essentially the concept is, and, and Lucian kind of said it too, is that you don't know what's going to happen to your memories when you go to the next domain. Mm hmm. Don't she write all this shit down? <laughs> she's, she's literally writing all this shit down. She's like... <laughs> so you may have more memories. You may lose memories. You may gain memories. You may figure something out. It's so funny because everyone goes to sleep and Josie's like, I don't need to sleep. I don't need to sleep. He's like, 
I love that Josie did all this. Josie started this. I can't believe she passed that. That's what I can't me. believe she fucking passed it so high either. I didn't even plan for y'all to get your fucking memories back this early. I like mean, <laughs> Josie. Well, that's why you're gonna start erasing them. <laughs> they still I back. have to, no. <laughs> no I don't think so. I think I'm gonna probably, as DM, I'm probably gonna have it be a particular role, depending. That's and to see how much, because like you're not gonna lose everything, obviously, but it's gonna see how much you remember. It's like then we of the things and how we can re remember stuff. You can keep re remembering them, and it's it's so funny unless you get like a high enough uh, intelligence. Like for example, Saren and um, Lucian are not going to be able to forget the reality mm-hmm. anymore. Okay. So if you succeed on all of the roles. It'll be fine. So basically, Josie's got to get her chance to succeed on an int and a mm-hmm. strength save again. But it'll have to be in another domain. Okay, that's fair. Because you're not going to get another chance in this one. That's fair. Because you guys are probably going to defeat Sager literally next episode. That's fair. <laughs> so you're going to be heading to a new domain in a minute. Can Josie, like, write it down to get, like, advantage or something? So she's, like, writing shit Um, down. You're not, like, you're not going to forget anything. It's just... It's hard to explain. Like, you're going to have the feeling still. You got way high on that. And you're going to have the memories because you got a really high wisdom. It's just your intelligence, um, you're just going to have to re-roll intelligence in the next domain when you try again. Yeah, so basically it's just like the only role. So what it's going to be is the only role that's going to matter is intelligence, but you have to succeed on all of them to fully get your memory back. All at once or at like... So in the new domain, you're going to have to try again because you're going to have to get first emotional. Mm -hmm. You got to get it emotionally. Then you got to get it wisdom. Those roles don't carry over. You're not going to forget anything, but you're not going to just succeed if you just get an intelligence, but you fail on charisma and wisdom next time. Okay, so Does that make t- sense? you're telling me I'm going to have to re-roll all the saves again. Yes. Okay, that's all I needed to know. <laughs> it's, it's hard, though, because I can't say that, like, if you're going to have to re-roll them, but they're not going to have an impact on what you do or don't remember. It's going to have an impact on how you connect all of that to intellect. Okay. If that makes sense. So basically, it's into like that's the main, that's yes. the biggest role. Okay. Yeah. Which means that when you do charisma and stuff, you can get lower this next time because you already succeeded so and remember. So it's basically like lower difficulty dice for like the higher you yes. get on each of those roles. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fair. Like for Sabora, for example, in the next domain, she's going to have to have a higher... Because um, the ones that matter are charisma, wisdom, and intellect. The others are just kind of key. The key. others are physical. Yeah. Yeah. So, like Saren, for the next, for this domain specifically, he's going to have a hard time with, like, doing things the right way. He might fail the first time he does something. Mm-hmm. Um, Sabora, similarly, because you got a low dex on that. So when you do things, I might tell you you have disadvantage in this domain um, for right now. But you, you got low charisma... And you got low intelligence. So in the next domain, when you ultimately have the opportunity to try again, you're going to have to pass charisma and intelligence, but your wisdom will have a lower difficulty. Okay. In order to remember everything the right way. But you think, um, but Lucian and Saren will not forget next time in next domain. So if you struggle, they can still kind of direct you because for some reason... They're geniuses. For some reason, Jesse restarted a whole entire fucking domino effect. Yeah, really. <laughs> Except for for fucking Leon and Archeon, the dumbasses. Well, that's why we both made them big buff himbos, I guess. Um, but everyone goes back to sleep. Jesse's like staying up because you know she doesn't need to. Sleep. Yeah, you don't have to sleep anymore. She's like, Lucian, I mean, you could go to sleep. He doesn't have to sleep either. They just both stay up, and she's like, this is bad. <laughs> and Lucian explains to you what reality is, basically. And she'll trust like Lucian. So mm-hmm. She's like, she still her mind still can connect it, but she's like, no, I'll trust what. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's like, so that happened, but then that happened. 
However, when you think back to, like, the memories and stuff, you can't tell the difference. So even though he's told you, you can look at, like, a book and, like, that you've written everything in, Mm -hmm. and you see that is fact. But then when you stop looking at the book or stop registering the fact you just read this (laughs) sentence, it becomes confusing again. Okay. Almost like a spell. Well, she'll still keep it down. Almost like a curse. She still keeps it down just because it's safe for yep. that way. Yeah. For her, anyway. Yeah. So if she needs to look back at it, she'll just have to look. <laughs> but everyone else goes to sleep. Just like, how am I going to perform like a vampire? Just like, how am I, I going to perform that when I'm a vampire? Like, what? <laughs> Um, and Saren actually doesn't sleep, um, because now all he is thinking about is the fact that his sister's missing. Yeah, no. This is like... <laughs> and his brother's also missing, so that's kind of crazy for him. Yeah, it's just he's like, Saren, where, where did Luna go? He's like, I don't know. She, what, she's not in... She wasn't in... These memories. No. At all. Neither is Siren. It's like they didn't exist. <laughs> he's like I'm a little concerned but I mean we're already stuck in Ravenloft so I suppose we have to keep going until we get to Strahd maybe we'll find a hint or something um, but if if and Lucian says but Strahd told us not to come and we all know who Strahd is is Strahd and he looked like he had his memories back red eyes the fangs all the works if he tells us not to come, of all people, I'm a little concerned. I am too. Lathander said that we need to remember to, to be Cerberus or something like that. Why? I don't know. What that means, what is... Then what about everyone else on the other side? <laughs> not in Raven Loft! <laughs> He's like, oh my... God, like the whole reality's warped. Oh my God. Oh, no spring. <laughs> oh fuck. And he's like, wait. That, that also means that. Uh oh. Didn't, didn't Onyx and Eliana die? They did. Why are they? Ooh. Mm. That's okay. Well, that's a problem for another time and another life. We do have to solve everything else that's coming up. Yeah. So let's, let's take it slow. <laughs> She's like, let's take it slow. We went, I think, way too fast. Yeah, I get a little overwhelmed. Meanwhile, Millennia's like, there. She's like, She's like, look, look what happened with Vander, look. Well, Vander's like... You think I remember too fast? <laughs> that's what she says. He's like... They didn't all remember, though. They didn't remember the right way entirely either. No, they didn't. I mean, Lucian and Saren <laughs> were doing great. Then there's Sabora. Then there's Leon and Archeon. Then there's Josie. At least Josie kind of. She's is. existing. She's not She's not the dumbest, so. No, we'll see what happens. And it's the next morning. Wow. God, you're getting used to their wings. Yeah, uh, Sabora, you were struggling a lot to sleep because your wings kept moving on their own. They smacked you in the face one time. Bro, Saren was like laying, like sitting next to her or something. He stayed up like because he, um, he was worried about Luna. I think I think Josie stayed with Saren. Well, Josie doesn't have to sleep. Uh, even if she <laughs> had to, she'd still stay around. <laughs> um. It is now Wednesday, mm-hmm. and it is uh, seven a.m. Josie's like, Saren, do you want to do this or not? I mean, you're kind of. Saren's like, a lot happened. I don't want to put that on. He's like, we might as well go. We've already made the commitment, and we need the invitation. We do. Wow, he's gonna think you look crazy. I don't think I can inherently change that, Saren. I mean, you just look, say it's your costume. You look more like the Red Death now, I guess. You know what? I could say it's my costume, Sabora. I think that's what I'm gonna go for. Make a percep. I want you all to make a perception check. Me perception? Everyone. Oh. Because everyone's up now. Twelve for Leon. Is 
17 for JC. James is like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Three. Everyone but Sabora. Uh, you hear screaming outside. Josie immediately looks Terrified up. screaming. Josie looks out the window. You look out the window and um, you see a body <gasps> staked against a wall. <gasps> the red dead. Mm-hmm. And it's right outside of y'all's um, house. That's not... It's not on the house, but it's on the house across. Uh, Damn. This is like... <coughs> What'd you get again for perception? You? Of 17. This is Alexandre du Cerce. <gasps> Jesse's like... <laughs> <laughs> what? Jesse's like, that guy that kidnapped you, he's pinned up against that wall over there. No shit. She runs over there. <laughs> <books. laughs> yeah. Lynn's like, I want to see this shit. Everyone comes up and is like, what the fuck? Jesse's like, whoa. I guess he got on the wrong side. Look, Quill. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead! Quill's like... She's like... Just like wow, oh. my problem is solved. Just Yay. Like, literally. He's like, don't forget to burn the contract with Quill. I'll do it eventually. I guess it's because you don't follow you around the forever. She can't be more than 10 meters from me right now. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to make her stay within 10 meters of you? Oh, uh, until she gets around to burning the contract. It's been kind of busy. Quill's just sitting there and she's like, Well, I have no one out to kill me now, so I guess I can go. Yep. She tries to leave and she can't get farther than 10 feet and she's like, Sorry, contract. I gotta, I gotta burn it. Can you burn it? <laughs> Tomorrow was really just not to just keep this one around for what? Lights it on fire. <laughs> She's like, thank you. And she's like, and if you need to contact me, and she gives you her address so you can contact her. Okay. Um, Bye. And she, she's like, Bye. Uh, good luck with the, you know, body change and stuff. And she leaves. No, she kind of like took out a glass and takes some of his blood. She's like, don't mind me. I kind of have to do this. Was everyone watching? No, she's just discreetly doing it. <laughs> no, she's, she's like, <laughs> yeah, she's just, because I, I guess we're all standing around his body, so it's kind of like no one can really. What she's doing besides y'all, yeah. Um, and you guys, um, are like, Well, is she burning? Uh, Josie, yes, making her <laughs> mm. con save. Con save, I bet she gets burned like hell. Yeah, she got a six. Um, you're not burning, burning, but it hot. feels, it feels spicy. She's gonna, she's gonna put a hood over her. You feel better. Yeah, because she doesn't wear short sleeve shit. You do feel, um, Lucian will say, uh, Lathaner ha- still has a lot of light around you, so I think it still helps, but it's hard because we're in, you know, Ravenloft. Yeah, so it's fine. I can just keep the hood on and such. <laughs> Nothing that big of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> As long as I don't get roasted immediately as I go outside, then I think I have enough saving grace. Um, and Lucian says, well, I guess you guys should go to your advertisement thing? Yeah, let's go, Saren. Saren walks with, and you guys make it to, um, the opera house, and, oh uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Oh my god, you just walk up looking like a whole different bitch. So does Saren! So cool. like, he doesn't look too different, he just has more scars. That's the part. Victim for real. <laughs> um, he, uh... Stop, I'm gonna shit myself. Uh, Perintius looks at you guys, and he's like... Uh... Just the new look I was trying out for the part. The, the things, too? Yes. It's cool. I think it looks great for the death. You know, intimidating. I guess, because the howling and all the stuff. Yeah, like, maybe she's part wolf. You never know. Okay. Um, that's cool. Yeah, sure. Cool. Um, He's kind of scared of the And he, he glances at Saren, and Saren's like... He's like, why? 
I'm not going to question why you have more scars. It's fine. Come on, come on. And he, he ushers you guys, and you guys walk over to Gryod Park, and he's like, okay, guys, I have flyers. And he shows you guys the flyers. And he's like, and on them, it also says that James Musell is coming to this, this thing, okay? So that means more people are going to come, because they're going to know. Okay, so what you guys are going to do is you're going to start acting your part, so I hope you memorize something. She did memorize her parts. <laughs> I want you to make an intelligence check to see how much you remember. Don't do this to her. She got a 10. That's not bad. Yeah. She's not wrong. Yeah. My boy, Siri. Hey. Siri remembers everything. Um, he's like, I glanced at it twice and I memorized it. She's like, I can memorize. <laughs> um, he's like, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just do the scenes that I know really quick. Um, and he's like, and then the scenes that you know, you know, you'll, you'll do. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all are like, cool. And I need you to make performance check. You make persuasions. <laughs> persuasions. Did she make persuasions for instead for giving out flyers? No, because you're performing and he's the one giving out flyers. Because uh-huh. you're doing a small performance to try and get people to, why are you doing perception? Oh, that's the raw, oops. <laughs> I clicked on the wrong fucking thing. Because they're so close together. I don't know what I got. I got three, so I can't do that well this time. Um, she's like, she's like, I think I need to step out. <laughs> uh, Sarah does pretty good. He's like, and then everyone's like, ah, and they all start circling, and um, Sarah gestures to you to just act like you kill him. Josie can do that. <laughs> okay, you act like you kill him. You go like, and he's like, ah. he's like, yeah, she. she and he does do like that. the opera. He's like. Oh. Gives, him the, gives him the support because she's like, I don't feel like the He's like, and then everyone's like, oh, wow. Justin looks Whoa. scary now, too. And they're like, look at her. Why does she look like that? Wow. Ooh. I mean, yeah, basically she's. And scary. he's passing out flyers and he's like, welcome, welcome, everyone, everyone, come. Thursday night at 6 p.m. is our performance of. The Red Death. And also, James Musell is coming, so you should come too. And he passes them out. And um, uh, a bunch of people start taking the flight. And they're like, I'm going to tell my friends about this. I'm Me say- too. I'm and they all say, I'm be real. They're like, wow. And they're all like watching as Sarah does a little bit more acting. And then you guys, um, after like an hour or so, you guys are like, okay. And Print- uh, Printus is like, and remember to practice, practice, practice. Like, I guess I'll go practice after I turn to a goddamn vampire. <laughs> what? Nothing, anyway. And he's like, okay, he's like, so practice tonight since it's Wednesday, and then tomorrow, you know, we have the show, so be ready. And he's like, bye, and he leaves after, and he like, as he walks, he keeps passing out flyers all the way back to the opera house, and you can do what you want now. And she's like, I guess I'll just remember and rehearse after I turn into a goddamn vampire. That's what she looks at Sarah and she's like, At least one. your sister's not missing. Well, she's definitely my daughter, I guess. Yeah. Hard life, huh? And he turns and he's like, I guess we're going home. Let's go home. And you guys go back to the house and everyone's still there. Um, and James Musell walks out and he's like, uh, Don't worry, just tell you, say whatever else you're going to say before I even say anything. And he glances at Savora's big ass wings that are punching her in the face. And she's like, I have a Savora sitting there and she's like, <laughs> and she's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh. my body betrays me. <laughs> um, and you're like holding on to your wings, and Archeon's actually behind you helping you. And um, I assume, uh, and Archeon's like, Leon, help her. I'm trying, but they're smacking me too! And they're like, <laughs> Leon like gets knocked to the floor and he's like, ah oh, shit! <laughs> Why are you so strong? I don't know, God! <laughs> um, James like, okay, um, just, just. It, uh, if you wanted to talk to Ebony, she said that she was ready to talk to y'all. Leon's like, okay, I'll go talk to her since I guess Josie's a vampire and Sabor has giant wings that keep smacking everything. Be fucking for real. Be fucking for real. That's literally how she says. Be yeah. fucking for real. Does anyone, does anyone want to come with me? 
No. I will. Who says that, Lucian? Archeon. Archeon? And Lucian also is like, sure. Like, Taryn goes, yeah. Boy. I guess I'll be with you, Sabora. Huh? I guess I'll be with you, Sabora. Where? Right here, unless you want to go see Ebony, too, with your giant wings that snap in. I'm just hanging out. Your wing punches you in the face again. I'm gonna fucking cut you off. <laughs> you know what? Just come with me. Let's just go. Yeah? What am I gonna do? Be punched in the face by this fucking wing in front of Miss, uh, fine so she's fucking... Like, here, let me just... Uh, actually, when you threaten your wing, it, uh, it quivers. <laughs> and shrinks. It goes... And stops moving. Jesse's like, here, I can, I can tie your wings in a healthy manner. I think I got it. <laughs> I think I got it, girl. Okay. So, everyone goes yeah. to see Ebony? Yeah. Uh, okay, you guys go, and you see Ebony, and she, she's in, like, um, he takes you to the room, and he's like, only you guys know this room now, and it's, like, a special room, and he goes, here, and it's in his here. office, and he, like, does, like, a magic incantation, and, like, a secret door opens, and it, down a hallway you go, and then to the left, and you see a nice little room, um, and, uh, you see Ebony, she's sitting there, and and she's she like is looking around. She's like, holy oh, shit! <laughs> and she sees all of you guys in there. And she's like, and James is like, so these are the people who saved you. <sighs> Why um, would you do that? What a party! <laughs> what a party! <laughs> and Ebony, Ebony looks at you guys, and she's like, oh, um, hi. And Josie's like, it's nice to meet you, Ebony. Nice to meet you too. My name is Josie, and this is Leon Lucian. <laughs> so yeah, she yeah. and she's like, that, wow, there's a lot of you. Yeah, we came all together here, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, she smiles, like, awkwardly, like, what do you want, kind of thing. How are you feeling after, I guess, that? <laughs> Traumatized? <laughs> yeah, we... We are trying to get to Sadra, not to know her, obviously. Well, know her, but not to be associated with her. And she's sort of our ticket out of here, basically. Out of where? Uh, the city. Why Eventually you just leave? We cannot. I don't think you both, you and James, would believe us if we told you. Okay. So I have to believe that you want to get close to Sadra because you can't leave the city. Correct. I don't feel very convinced. And they're like, well, this is a curse. This <laughs> sort of a curse. I mean, have you heard about the, the girl, that woman that cross mist or something like that? And Lucian actually holds up a hand to you and he goes, we want to kill Sadra because she's a bad person. Yes, he does. Very much so. Our motivations don't necessarily matter here. It's just we want her dead. We recognize she's not good. And Sadra nods and says, okay. How am I supposed to help you with that? You seem to, you and James seem to know enough about Sadra. They kind of glance at each other and then glance back at you. Like, they definitely know something. To know something about Sadra that of us that we do not, that could possibly get to her. Destroy her. <laughs> um, James says, well... She has an obsession with being high class. This is a class in a library. <laughs> that, was a, that was a trip. Um, and she and <laughs> Ebony responds and goes, she has an obsession with being high class, but she's not. She's low born. Um, she's like, we are stepsisters. She, my mother met her father and they got married and we became stepsisters. She 
had this holier than thou attitude where she was fully convinced she was a duchess uh, because her father my stepfather essentially told her when she was growing up that he was the duke of a faraway land and he could not go to said land because his wicked brother ruled uh, it was a blatant lie but she believed it hey, what's his father's name? <laughs> or do you not know? Um, I do know Ugh. Oh, what you know? Dominic. Dominic. Dominic Dana. That was her father. And that is my stepfather. Um, he said that he was the Duke of a faraway land and so when my mother who was a, a merchant and a pretty well off one middle class at best um married her father and we became her stepsisters me and my other sister um ava she would act so holier than now that we are not arguably we weren't the kindest to her how are you supposed to be kind to somebody who acts like that? Um, just like, essentially, um, we revealed to her that her father wasn't a duke. And she went a bit mad, per se. Um, she said that we were wrong in all of this stuff and we kept trying to tell her that's that's the one nice thing we did we tried to tell her the truth she wouldn't believe it um and then the duke of a nearby land died and she was convinced this was the land her father was talking about he was the true duke of mm -hmm. and that this was his brother who died um that's when our father came forward and said he was no duke to Sadra. Uh -huh. And her in denial ran off. She, now this is hearsay, this is what I heard happened. She ran to a far, uh, she ran to the, the dukedom, I suppose the same dukedom that she thought she was supposed to be the duchess of because her father was supposed to be the duke and she meets the the new duke the son of the man who died mm -hmm. and she meets him at a ball and it's a masquerade ball they all go in with masks on um but obviously sadra could not go not with how she was dressed. So she went to her mother's grave because her mother died when she was young. And she cried and cried and cried and said, I'm a duchess, I'm a duchess, I'm a duchess. And was so convinced she was a duchess that hearsay, of course, her dead mother appeared before her. Sorry. <laughs> that normal life, man? I'm like, holy shit. And her dead mother said darling there's a ball and if you go to this ball all of your dreams will come true i'll give you the dress i'll give you the mask would you like to take the deal <coughs> <coughs> and sadra of course says yes so she's adorned in the most beautiful dress, the most beautiful mask, and she is taken to this ball in a beautiful carriage. She walks into this ball and she meets the Duke's son, who is now the Duke. And they have a wonderful dance and a wonderful time. 
and I don't know for sure, but knowing Sadra, I know why she went there. She wanted to be Duchess. She wanted him dead. She wanted to take the place. However, when the clock struck 12, everyone started dying. Diseases plagued the entire ball. Everyone was dropping dead. And the Duke falls and Sadra falls next to him. And when they found their bodies, Sadra was found next to him, but the Duke was found with a knife in his chest, stabbed in the heart. She says, I don't know, that all is hearsay, um, but Sadra was supposed to have died that day. That's what everything said. Then here, lo and behold, I hear a Porta Lucine in Dementilieu. And I hear the name Sadra Deganer and I come to town. And before I know it, I'm in a hospital being called crazy and insane for making claims that Sadra is as villainous as she truly is. I guess she has something to hide. And James, uh... James nods and says, yes, that is a similar case with me. That is the story that I heard as well. Mm. <coughs> he says, so essentially, she is in fact lowborn, but is acting like she's highborn. And who would know otherwise than her stepsister? James says, yeah, because I, I can sit here and say all day, but I'm not a blood relation, so it's not going to, it's going to be her word against mine, but now there's two people who have the same thoughts and experience, so now it might make a little more of a difference. Uh, make a perception check, both of you. With my... Two characters. Nine. My highest was twelve. Two. Okay. Um. What is this? The microphone? The book? Oh, it's under your computer. I keep doing it. <laughs> um. You see, uh, whoever, whichever, one of your characters got the 12, yes. um, you see something shake in Lucian's like, bag. He's like, he's like, Lucian, the book. Oh, and he pulls out the book. He's like, it's not moving now. I think it was. What were we just talking about? Ebony, maybe? You have to ask it a question. Yeah, it's like... We already, we already asked who was Sage Sager there and there. And there. Yeah, like, think with me. Um, <laughs> Cause we just... It started shaking. None of the NPCs are gonna give you the answer to this question, so it's up to y'all. Yeah, I know. We're thinking. I don't know, but I was thinking uh, maybe that the talisman is the knife dagger that she used to, I guess, kill the Duke? Possibly. Um. I think it's just questions. Like questions. 
I my mind is empty. <laughs> Haley, help me out. <laughs> um. All right. Do you know enough about Sadra's story? Okay, Sadra. And did her sister tell you everything? Because there are gaps, and a lot of what she said was hearsay. I'm interested in the uh, the grave situation. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder if that was even her mother, or if that was like an apparition that came to her to try and strike a deal under the guise of being her mother. James looks at you all and he says, I wish we had something that could prove what is truth and what is not. She's like, who is Sadra doing there to the book? What is Sadra Day in there? <laughs> you think, I th- as DM, you are close. Mm-hmm. It's a similar question. Where is Sadra Day in there? It's something about Sadra Day in there. It's something similar to what, who is Sadra Day in there. Mm-hmm. But who, you need to think harder about it. Who is Sadra Day in there, really? <laughs> there you go. Yay! The book opens. And I did not cover this part, so I'm going to read it. Okay. Um, but it pops up, and you see Sadra de Henaire's backstory. More in the backstory! More! And it says, Sadra de Henaire grew up on a tiny farm, living alone with her father after the death of her beloved mother. Her father called her Duchess, claiming that he <coughs> was a duke exiled from his rightful home by a vicious younger brother. The young girl took pleasure in lording the, that fact over other peasant children, proclaiming herself superior by birth despite her present circumstances. Sadra had no friends, but many playmates, as she bullied other children into entertaining her. When Sadra was a teenager, her father married a prosperous merchant with two daughters, a few years older than Sadra. Though her father urged the three girls to love each other as sisters, this new wife and her daughter scorned Sadra, mocking her claims to nobility and treating her as a servant. Despite the family's new wealth, Sadra continued to dress in rags and labor from dawn to dusk, acting as a housemaid to her stepmother and stepsisters. Ooh, that's sad. A harder blow descended when Sadra's stepmother casually mentioned the death of the duke who ruled nearby. Sadra asked the duke was her father's wicked brother and if his demise meant her father could reclaim his title. Her stepmother and stepsisters laughed at her and her father admitted the truth. He had only been a servant in the duke's household and fled when he was caught trying to steal silver from the kitchen. Sadra refused to accept this bitter truth. Fleeing the house, she went to her mother's grave and begged the departed spirit to aid her. A kind figure of her mother appeared and granted Sadra's wish, bestowing on her a magnificent gown and fine jewels to attend the masquerade ball that celebrated the coronation of the new duke. (coughs) Sadra rode to the ball in a stately conjured carriage determined to kill the duke and claim his title. At the ball, the glamour around Sadra made her irresistible to the duke, and they danced together for hours. Sadra began to contemplate An alternative to murdering the Duke. She could marry the poor fool and become the Duchess she'd always believed herself to be. But as the clock struck midnight, terror stalked the halls, uh, terror stalked the ball as guests started rapidly sickening and dying. The plague afflicted the Duke and Sadra as well. As they lay dying in each other's arms, the Duke gasped a fateful confession. He was not the son of the late Duke but of a servant in the duke's household. The duke, unable to have children of his own, claimed the servant's infant son and raised him. (coughs) Later, that servant was caught stealing from the kitchen and fled the house with his young daughter. Enraged to discover this duke was no more a real duke than her father, and worse, that he was her brother, Sager drew her blade and drove it into into the pretender's heart. She stumbled out of the palace, but the plague claimed her on the stairs. Ooh. Sadra awoke on the foggy grounds of her new estate in Porta Lucine, a true duchess as she had always imagined. 
Yeah, but busted. also a blank. Bust a blank. This part's scratched out. It says, When she's dressed in elegant gowns and an elaborate mask, those around her accept the obvious lie that she is blank. When she isn't hosting her masquerade balls, she blank. Her goal is the same. Unmask and destroy pompous fools who pretend to be what they are not, aspire to a higher station than they deserve, and fail to maintain the appearance of normalcy. Damn, so she's kind of like... Like, so I'm gonna read that last section again because it's really important. Yeah, I was gonna say that's like a that's completely different from what she's like. What people are kind of going for. Holy shit. So, Sadra awoke on the foggy grounds of her new estate in Porta Lucine, a true duchess as she always imagined, but also a blank. A banshee. <laughs> I wouldn't blame him. When she's dressed in elegant gowns and an elaborate mask, those around her accept the obvious lie that she's a blank. Is it one blank or is it like a couple words or You don't know. It's all scratched out. Okay. When she isn't hosting her masquerade balls, she is blank. Her goal is the same, to unmask and destroy pompous fools who pretend to be what they are not aspire to higher stations than they deserve and fail to maintain the appearance of normalcy. <coughs> That's so, like, crazy that she destroys the, like, fake, fake people. Like, when fake. she's the fakest of them all. Yeah, and it's also funny because then it's like, what does it say for us who are not really that fake? Like, <laughs> when she sees us. It's kind of crazy to me. Normalcy. But it's her normalcy. That's kind of funny. Lucian whispers to you, Josie, and says, um, based on what the book said about her uh, destroying fools who pretend to be what they're not, couldn't that kind of be said for all of us? I think so. Because we don't have... Some of us don't have our real memories, I think that so can... we're kind of acting like what we're not. I think so, but also, if you know, they believe, or I don't, I don't know what's going on personally for me, but if I were thinking hypoth- hypothetically, if Leon and Archeon don't know if that's, they think that's their real memory, then are they really acting fake? Well, then the question could be asked if you are. Or if Sabora is, when Sabora said she remembered things, but she didn't have the feelings to go with it. For me and her, I think it's dangerous. For Archeon, Leon, and you and Saren, I don't think it's dangerous. No. Okay. With this information, would you like to say anything to Ebony or James? <laughs> they're, like looking, they're like, what is that book? <laughs> yeah, they see you guys pull out a book, and they're like... It's sort of our guide around here. <laughs> Oh. So, Sadra is definitely Loveborn, yes. And, mm-hmm. and, well, does that if, book say whether she's Loveborn or not? Does he not? Oh. She said that the Duke that was killed with the knife in his chest was apparently her brother, actually. Hmm. Says that, you know infertility so they I guess her father her stepfather was actually the father of the dude that that's a lot that is a lot um I guess the plague did get her Mm. and it said that she woke up she uh, disappeared here yeah she disappeared just appeared here and it's all scratched out she said she was also a duchess, but she was also blank. Can you show me that? Yeah, she'll, she'll, she'll show me. Uh, you guys show her the book, and she looks at you guys like you're crazy. She says, this doesn't say anything. This is blank. Mm-hmm. Now we know another information. Now we can hear to see it, but... I'll be back. 
We also have to remember that Imani put people here, so I feel like... <laughs> I feel like her appearing on the shores of this place is her being teleported to this realm. Yeah, this domain. as players we know it, but as characters we're like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, it's just something to think about. Yeah, no. And you know, it's also something that plays out over and over again. Like, it's kind of like the Barovia campaign, Curse of Straw. It's like... It the same timeline, yeah. The yeah. same time of events. It's just y'all's presence changes it ever so slightly First or majorly. It was pretty accurate to this one, though. Like, they, mm-hmm. they were telling like a good. The, it's like a summary, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like just a more detailed version. A lot more detailed, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this is like, I guess, I guess y'all can't read the book. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's sad. That is very sad. But that is what we can just remit. Like, she tells about the blank, the parts are scratched out for her. Sort of like a cursed book, I guess. Mm-hmm. Would you like to... Um, and you see Lucian, he's looking at the book, and he, um... He goes and looks at the... Original... Porta Lucine Dementaliu page, the first one, the one that doesn't have anything to do with her backstory, but tells you guys about the realm itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me fucking pull this shit off. Um, and he looks at it and he's like, it says what the mist talisman could be. What does it say? It says. Jeweled or feathered mask. Article of well-worn fine clothing. A shoe made of glass or gold. So, jeweled feather mask. Or for you, these jeweled feather mask. We have a glass shoe or gold shoe. That's good. And then we also have what was that second one? Article of well-worn fine clothing. Uh, <laughs> Lucian uh, ended up looking back at the book at the original domain of like the mentally you page, this one, and <coughs> saw that the mist talisman was revealed. The the mist talismans were what? Revealed of what it they could be. Oh. Yeah. So Jack and already wrote it down, but it's a jeweled or feathered <coughs> mask. Article of well worn fine clothing or a shoe made of glass or gold. A shoe made of glass or gold. And she's got the Cinderella story going on. Yeah. <laughs> These are all fairy tales. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's almost like the whole library was full of Cinderella stories. I know. That's so funny to me. Josie's like, no wonder it was like that. Amani playing a joke. Amani loves her jokes. <laughs> it's funny because Amani didn't make this round, did she? <laughs> Did she? This is way before Armani's time. <laughs> when I created her. If you think so. What, you made up the story? Of what? Of Cinderella? No, like she knows. I mean, the Cinderella <coughs> story was. What are you talking about? No, I mean, like, in real life. Like. <laughs> oh, like. Yeah, we're just putting a Cinderella story in the campaign. I'm really confused. I th- no, what I was saying was a joke where it was like, you know, I was saying a joke where like the Strahd's and like the Ravenloft realm was way before when I created Imani. <laughs> like it existed before. Authors, like it. not in the game, like authors, <laughs> like D and D authors. <laughs> you know yeah. What? So so Ravenloft existed before you created Imani. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the joke flew over. It's okay. We can just keep going. <laughs> Yeah, but in our game, our Ravenloft, because yeah. we, I have taken Ravenloft so far off kilter from what Ravenloft actually <laughs> is that it's my Ravenloft it's now, okay? Ravenloft. So, it, it's Amani's Ravenloft now. Yes. Um, she made this shit. The fucking creators made this shit. Um, so, the Miss Talisman could be a jeweled mask. Um, jeweled or feathered mask. Okay. Sorry, I'm formatting. Well, they're very specific too. It isn't it? Isn't just like I can find these items anywhere. Uh huh. Um. You'd assume it'd probably be found in the. In 
ball. the actual estate. Which the only way to get to the estate is during the ball. So. Yeah, basically. A gold or glass too. Mm-hmm. Or a well-worn piece of fine clothing. And um, Lucian reads this out loud for you guys. And then um, Ebony says, well, she has a, she has gold shoes. That's what she, well, that's what it said when her body was found, she was wearing some gold shoes. Noted. (laughs) At this point, it is almost 6 p.m. in time for the lovely theater production. Ooh. It's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because Leon and Archie are going. Mm-hmm. They all go. So, if you would like to attend this production, you need to marry one gold going. Okay. Oh, well, good thing we have one gold going. Not that we're doing much to buy clothes with them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you guys still have to do that in order to actually attend the ball. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to look the part, not just, you know. I just gotta buy, like, jewelry, I think. You're set. Your dress is so expensive, and oh, you really? were seen with the fucking guy. Like, yeah, you're fucking set as shit. Alright, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I was gonna say. You're, you're so fucking set. Girl, your, your dress is so fucking fancy, you don't need jewelry. That's how fancy your dress is. She'll just wear her gold chain and her wedding ring. Cute. Love that. Uh, Jessie's actually going to stay back so she can practice part of this. So as well, she's like, I'm just going to chill. Saren will too, because he also needs to practice. He's just, he's like, this is it. This is like, I have memories of like weird things of doing things like this. That's weird. That's suspicious. That's suspicious. That's weird. Um, is the going to go? Yeah. Leon, Leon and Archeon are going? Yeah. Uh, Lucian will go too. Because Sabora's going. And he still loves Sabora. Yeah. He still loves Sabora. He protect- now he loves Sabora more. I was going to say, he knows that Jessica protects herself when she's a vampire. <laughs> yeah. But she won't die. Would you call the gown fine or costume clothing? Which one? Like for like inventory. Yours? Purposes. Yeah, yeah. Fine. She can push, drag, or lift 390 pounds. That is so much. So you guys um, walk to the theater, and as you know, you know, it's the Red Widow Theater, so you guys have that fucking widow on the top of the building, um, the Black Widow. Um, you guys enter the theater, and it's pretty nice. Um, and you're kind of surprised that, uh, James said previously that no one noteworthy attends because this place is fucking cool. Um, and it's very, very fancy. Uh, you guys go in, you pay your one gold coin and you take your seats all next to each other in a row. Um, and the, you get there right on time as curtains begin to draw and you start to see a lovely show about the SS Bonneville. Um, and it articulates basically what the submarine, um, not submarine, sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say, the ship, submarine. sorry. I, every time I see SS, I'm like, submarine. Uh, you see the, basically the same story that is in the ship, um, uh, museum, mm-hmm. SS Bonneville Museum. Um, however, when they get to the part where the crew disappears, the show shows a um a howl and a uh you see a red figure standing on top of the ship um and mm-hmm. everyone all of the ship members turn and look at this figure and are like <gasps> And you see her, uh, this figure, and everyone around you is like, that's the Red Death, that's the Red Death, that's the Red Death, that's the Red Death. Um, And you see 
her or this portrayal of her, obviously. Um, or <laughs> says the key. Uh, go down and approach each of these um, ship members. And she tackles them and stabs them in the chest and jumps into the ocean. Wow. Ocean, quote unquote, with them. Um, And you see, they portray in the theater that she, when she stabs them, she drags them to the bottom of the ocean and sticks them to the ocean floor with this sword. One sword for each of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're like, whoa, the acting immaculate. Um, and after all of the victims are thrown into the water and stabbed, um, you see the Red Death figure stand on the ship and p- looks at the audience. And um, she points, and I want you to make a perception check. <laughs> Man, I got a plus zero. Both of you, yeah. Four. Thirteen. <laughs> I want you to make an insight check as well. An insight? The good thing is a, a plus. Natural 20. 23. <laughs> we okay. Just, we're just like ah! you got. Uh, you guys can't really tell where this figure's pointing, but for some reason, uh, Leon, you think they're she's pointing pretty damn close to you guys, um, but you guys both feel that uh, the that she's staring right at y'all and pointing at y'all. Leon's like. And you feel really bad energy come off the stage. And you see the the actress who plays the Red Death smile and the curtains draw. And, and I was like, you gotta get it off of me. <laughs> I think so, too. And as the curtains draw, you hear a howl. Um, and you... And as soon as the curtains even start to draw... Um, you see everyone. That's my dog. Um, <laughs> you see everyone get up and haul ass out the theater. Oh yeah, the holiday. Yeah, Liam's like are out of there. Out Make of an here. athletics check. Oh no! Damn, this must be like a regular occurrence for these people. They are. They know. They know to get out of here. I mean, they got a twenty. You said athletics. Yep. I got a twenty. This is you running. Uh, unnatural twenty. Hey, nineteen. That was a bitch is not gonna make it. Hopefully nobody. No, someone's not. Okay. Um, you guys are running out the door and a bunch of people run out the door and um you two run out the door and suddenly the door closes. Oh no! Leon's like, Tomorrow we gotta do something! Who's still Shuts in behind there? you? Um, you guys look back and, and you're like, you're like looking through the fucking people in the crowd and shit. Um, you see a couple other people still stuck in and you also see Lucian and Archeon stuck in there. Uh-oh. Yes, we gotta get inside! I guess so. Can we do the strength check to break down the door? Sure can. You should use your portable, uh, battering ram. I should! <laughs> he takes it out. So we're gonna stand out of the way. He got a 19 without even like if there's any additions to that. <laughs> to uh, athletics? No, it's a strain. Oh, that's good. He literally just went. Yeah, she's like she's like you do that because she doesn't have good strength. He got a portable ram and he got a 19 for just nothing added. To I love that you have a portable ram. I, ha- I don't that know. Was so smart. It, it was just on it. And <laughs> he he slammed Ooh. into it with hit with the portable ram with a 19. <laughs> okay. Um, make a deck save. Okay. <laughs> You'll take the L. At six. You go flying backwards and ah. fall. Uh, literally you go boom and with the same force you go boom and go flying backwards. Oh, oh shit. Sephora, do something. And you see Lucian and Archeon like banging. Um, and you see them 
turn around like they see something. So we're like, he's like, do something, Zamora! She'll pick up the battery ram and fucking <laughs> bury <laughs> oh, it. Yeah, like, it. It's the windows! <laughs> Make a strength check. <laughs> you get an advantage? Four. Make a deck save. 25. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you, you hit it so light that you go, Ding! and then you go, Leon's gonna <laughs> ram into one of the windows. Um, make a text thing. He's still gonna do it! He got a 13. Uh, you slam into it and it bounces you back a little bit, but you stand on your feet. You're like, what the fuck? He's like, how did we get in? Uh, what'd you roll? I rolled a 13 for a dex save. I want you to make perception checks. Do I please get. Okay. 16. You got a 6, so you can't take it. The spider on top of the building's gone. Oh. (laughs) They're only the same. No spider. I don't like spiders. Um, Um, Can we make arcana checks? Or like anything that's... I'm arcana checking the fuck out of it. You can do it, because I I didn't get that high. Uh, 20. Unnatural. Um, you think that there is some magical energy, um, definitely on this place, dark fucking energy, um, but that, that spider yeah. was not a sculpture. Ooh. That was a magical black widow spider that is correlated to the theater, <laughs> perhaps tied to it. Having said that, you see Lucian, he, he's fucking stressed and there's like, ah! inside the building, but he turns and he holds up a thing and he's like, okay. holds it up. And you see, for where it says the Red Widow Theater, there was a part that was scratched out. Now it's not. It's no longer scratched out. It says, the Red Widow Theater is a cabaret known for lively music, provocative dancing, and shady dealings. A gigantic statue of a spider painted in garnish crimson with a black hourglass shape on its abdomen, adorns the front roof of the building, inviting customers into its decadent web. At this shrine to decadent pleasures, attendees celebrate beauty and life in defiance of the crushing poverty and horror outside. But the theater harbors horrors nonetheless. Shapeshifters using the cabaret's intimate spaces to find prey. Though rumors persist of shapeshifting giant spiders, that feast on unwitting customers, they fail to depress attendance at the theater's performances. Mm. What does that part mean? Like, as a uh, depressed theater? Um, oh, meaning shit. people still attend despite these rumors. Okay. Rumors. Okay. Well, how the fuck do we get in? Um, can you make an investigation check around here? I can make the fuck out of an investigation check. Sure can. I'm gonna investigate how to get in this damn place. 26. You think the only way to get in would be via magic? You would have to teleport in. He's like, say less. Misty oh, yeah, step. Misty step. I go in. He's like, oh wait, bring me with you. Can I bring it with me? I don't know, can you? Check Misty step. Uh, it's, it's a self thing. Okay, so you can go in. Yeah. You yeah, got nothing to. Leon, yeah, what would you like to do? Um, <laughs> let's see what he actually does. Um, can he actually like? <laughs> he's an arcane focus for some reason. <laughs> you can't get in. Would you like to do anything? Because even though you can't get in. Did anyone else get out? Other random people. Yeah, other just random people. Oh, so like. About. Oh wait, okay, so only me, Archeon, Leon, and Lucian only, went. Yes, of this group. Right. Okay. Because uh, Josie decided to stay home, and um, Saren also, Saren also stay. stayed home because they had to practice. You can't get help, so I just that's, 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 yeah. that's one thing. Do they know where the spider went? Um, make an intelligence check. Okay. 
Plus zero. You can also make an intelligence check, Sabor. He, he got a four. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna do it. You don't know. My tongue hurt. I don't. Like, really bad. <laughs> 18? You think that this is basically synonymous for when a spider catches somebody in its web. You think that the theater is a web. And you guys it's are deliberately flies attract. that have got caught in the web. Oh, and that... you think that no one's going to be able to get in or out physically <sighs> until either everyone's dead or the spider's dead. Well, Leon can actually use boots of striding and springing that he's had and move twice as fast to get to Saren and Josie. Just like that, you get home. He's like, tur, 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 tur. I need you to teleport me into the Red Bull Theater. We need to stop trusting these places. People are, friends are trapped in there and they're gonna die. What? <laughs> that spider's real. <laughs> Come on, Josie. She's like, okay. <laughs> hey, y'all all go. Do, 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 do. Okay. Yep, and he, he like literally carries Sarah on his back as he runs like triple speed. Um, and as everyone's going, uh, Sabora, um, when you Misty step in, uh, you Misty step right where Archeon and Lucian were. They're no longer there. Uh-oh. Matter of fact, no one is there. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. So when you entered the theater, there was this room, kind of like when we were entered the chapel the other day, yeah. Jacqueline's Lysy Chapel. Yeah. You know that room right before you entered the actual theater. Yeah. That's kind of where everyone was to try and leave. Yeah. You saw them in the window of the theater doors after Lucian showed you that page, though. They kind of moved from your sight, and now that you're in here, you no see no there. one. Um, I want to make an arcana check. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I forgot. John, Josie can move triple speed, like double speed too, so mm-hmm. she's just like... Um, oh so, God. natural 20, 27. Nice. Um, you think, um, you made an arcana check? Yeah. So, based on that, yeah. I'm going to use that to kind of track the spider in a way. Yeah. Um, the spider's not in this room. But you yeah, also don't sense any presence of anybody else in this room. Or if they were here, then they're not anymore. Yeah. Okay. But you think the spider web and the core of everything is the actual theater. Yeah, like the stage and seats and stuff. Okay. Um. So she's going to go ahead and draw her swords to be ready just in case she gets like jumped or something. Mm-hmm. And she's going to kind of like... Tiptoe around. Um, you can look through a window, like, of the door into the theater. Yeah, she's going to do that. The stage is open and the curtains are pulled. And you see a spider web from top left corner to the bottom right corner of the stage. And you see a bunch of people wrapped in spider webs like flies, including Lucian and Archeon. The... That's awesome. That's awesome. Good thing Leon's and Josie move fast as hell. You do not see a spider though. Uh oh. But you know that it is in that room based on your arcana check. Um, can I try and perceive the spider? Mm-hmm. Perceive it. I see. Seventeen. Okay. Um. You can't really tell, but from what you see, it's not on the floor and it's not on the walls, so that leaves it being on the roof somewhere. Did on the roof or the it? ceiling? The ceiling. Okay. So not like outside, but inside. That would make sense. Um, and you also, uh, because you got that high arcana check, you would also know that, um, based off what the book said as well, that this spider must have been the thing that played the Red Death, the shapeshifter, as well. Because after it did what it did, that's when all hell broke loose. Yeah. That's cool. 
Leon, you, Josie, and Saren all pop up. He's like, the way to get into it is to teleport in there. Do magic. Teleport by you just... <laughs> yeah, Saren teleports so himself and... Like, um, Saren teleports himself and Leon. And Josie, uh, because you're a vampire, you have Misty Step. <laughs> she just goes like... <laughs> and she's like, Zamora. Yeah, she like kind of shows you know, who the fuck's on. I can shoot down the lead. What? A gun. You are going to shoot this and this from this far. It can't reach that far. Okay, but can you aim it good enough to hit any of the actual things? Probably. Make an intelligence check. <laughs> He's a hundred percent convinced that he can do this. <laughs> make an make an intelligence check. I was gonna do that shit. Yeah, anyway. I was gonna say Jesse is gonna do this shit anyway too. Sixteen. Even if he actually shot it and actually hit it, spider webs are fucking sticky. And these happen to be really fucking thick, so his fucking bullet would get stuck in the spider web, and it would make no difference whatsoever. You can tell him that. Even if you hit it, it will do nothing. Goddamn. It'll just stick to it. Well then, how do we handle a giant ass spider? You gotta kill it. I can kill it. Was it a shapeshifter of some sort? Yes. Um, I also believe it to be on the ceiling because I can't see it on the walls or the floor. Can you try to see the ceiling? You guys aren't gonna be able to find where it is on the ceiling unless you enter the room because you can't see the ceiling. I was gonna say if it's actually (laughs) on Yeah, because it you're like looking through the window yeah, of the yeah. door, so you can't see the ceiling. You just see. And the this walls is like there's no the other entrances or like or hallways. It's just like straight into the room. Mm-hmm. He's like, we can. I think it already knows we're here, most likely. Perhaps. If it's like waiting like that, <laughs> should we just barge in? I can barge in. We have to enter one way or another if we're going to save anybody. Or if we do a decoy out there as a distraction. What, what's going to be a decoy? I don't know, something loud? Something that would draw attention? Do you have anything? I mean, Josie's a great decoy. But she's like, I can't run very fast and Misty Step everywhere. Why do you, why would you have to Misty Step? No, I could just run really fast. <laughs> I mean, you're also undead. That is true. So what? she can't like can't can't she not technically die in this realm anymore? Yeah, <laughs> until she gets staked to the heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and nobody knows that. <laughs> I don't even. Josie's like, well, it's perfect. I'll go out there. Okay, just be careful. I will. I mean, if I die, just put me in a coffin, I guess. I guess. <laughs> find one somewhere. Just come back. <laughs> just find some ninja. Take up someone's grave. Take it out with Josie. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, man. Jesse's like, all right, y'all be ready now. What? Okay, well, what are we gonna, are we just gonna, like, get the spider once it comes down at you, or well, how are we gonna do this? I'll try to make it face away from y'all. That could be a smart way to do it. Yeah, because Well, it, I assume it's probably gonna come down from the ceiling on a web, like a spider would, so as it comes down, we can just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Shoot the fuck out of it, maybe. And I could make it turn away from here so y'all could get the back of it so it won't be able to react as well. Yeah. Unless it shapeshifts into something else that's not a spider. I feel like spider is the optimal shape to be when attacking a bunch of people, so I won't I won't count on it shapeshifting. I also agree with that. Are y'all prepared? Yep. Just Bye. Prepared. Leon gets his gun out. <laughs> so please our cat illusion are looking at the door. Yeah, they're literally like and Jesse They're just chilling. And then Josie opens the door. They're like, oh god. And Josie, like, kind of. Because she see the spider? No. She's like, just start running anyway. She's making a perception now that she's in the room. Sure. So we're just going to pull out her crossbow instead of her swords, just so she can do it from far away. She got a 12. You can't tell. Mm-hmm. Good thing she's not dead. <laughs> How exactly did you go about this? Did you just walk in? I think that she opens the door. Okay. Yeah. 
you can, I mean, you can kind of see the roof, but you're also not in the room, so that perception check kind of, eh. Okay, so make sure. You can't see everything. Okay. Because you're like, it's like you're standing in the doorway of a room. Like, if I was in this doorway, I'd see some of the yeah. ceiling. Can you just be still? Or do you think it's not fucking You can lot? try. <laughs> I can try. She'll, she'll just be, try to be still. They both not. Actually, you know what? Just make an intelligence check. Okay. I can do that. And you too, Sabora. Mary's like, what are you bitches doing? Got a 19. <laughs> okay. You think stealthing's pointless because it knows you're here. Alright. I assumed it. <laughs> do you I know anything different as a 16? You know the same thing. Okay. It thinks it's waiting on your turn and what you do, and it's going to react. So when you enter this room, it's going to react. So just do what you gotta do, I guess. Uh, Josie will we'll move fast, so. You know, what are you doing? Um, she's going to move down one of the aisles. Deck save. Deck save. With and advantage. I was gonna say, I think she naturally gets advantage now, because he's a vampire. Yeah, for decks, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the fucking thing to be a vampire. Maybe it'd be like the meteor situation. <laughs> I got a twelve for the height. Oh, that's really low. She uh, only got a plus one, so, so I, I ain't got nothing on nothing. Um. She wants it though to face away from the main entrance. You don't get to decide that. I don't. You don't get to decide what the spider does. Not with a low deck save. <laughs> Well, it, you don't really get to decide what it does because you don't even know what way it's facing, so there's not really much information you can do with that. Okay. It goes to grab you, but you're too fast. Good. Does it drop down? Um, it go. It tries to go... It's like a claw machine. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but it, it misses, and so now it's on the floor with you. Um, can she... You guys have an opportunity of attack. Go for it. Everyone but Josie. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's staring at Josie. Let's see. Um, okay. So I get two two attacks, so I'll do it both with my crossbow. So I'm looking at sit. Um, two twenty ones to hit. Nice. That hits, yeah. I should have written what I wanted to do first, but it's okay. I'll hit two later. And he's gonna hit. 25 piercing damage. Okay. 25 piercing damage. I got a 24 and a 14 to hit. Um. 24 hits. I'm going to use a grit point to get an advantage on the second roll. Okay, go ahead. 10 grit points added by He does not hit on the second roll still. Got another 14. He does 13 piercing damage. Can you hit that with a shoe? There's what? a bug on that table. Where? Oh, wait. Right there. Yeah. It's a roach. Hit it with a shoe. Can you get it? Oh, <laughs> Hold on, let me move my stuff. I don't want to fall on my stuff. Are you scared of it? I I don't I don't have anything to hit it with. Oh. Hey, hey, stop moving. Bitch. I can't go and tell where it went. I think it's behind the pen. I think it went under your statue, maybe. Can it go under the statue? It's a roach. Yeah. I'm a roach. You scared of it? I, I literally can't find it. <laughs> well? It's under your statue, I think. Well, I don't think it went under nothing. It's like literally flush with the table. I don't know, it shouldn't be like that. Maybe it's on it though. <laughs> it's not in your fries. Yeah, maybe you might want to move your box of fries. Yeah, just throw on the table. Okay, I'm 
merch on that? I hope so. It's like the official merch too. Are you sure? Did you get it? No, I did no, not. No, she did not. I did not get it. Because it jumped. It literally jumped onto the table. <laughs> oh, wait. There it is. It's tucked in that little hole right there. Yeah, what the fuck? There's like this little little part that's like, like a, a little a small little recess from the from the thing that's like tucked in there. Where? It's like tucked into your statue. Literally, it's like there's Tiny. there's this one little part that's above the table and it's in there. Is it on the statue or is it on the table still? It's on, on the, the table, table like under, under the statue. statue. If I move it you have to hit it. Put a light, because I can't see. Yeah, I literally cannot see. I don't want to break your statue, though. I was flying on the ground with the statue. I think the, I think the shoe will be fine. I mean, the statue will be fine if you hit it with the shoe. Let's move it slow. Maybe it might not move as fast. Okay. Like, tilt it backwards, I think. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Got it. Squished it. <laughs> no thanks. No, I'm sorry. scared to hit a wrench? I think you'd be better at it than me. <laughs> that thing actually curled up too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I saw it. I don't know how you saw it. I could barely even see it yeah. when I was right by it. That thing really dead too. It's I'm really perceptive. It's like this. Crushed it real quick. I'll grab a trash can. And you can grab it with a fucking napkin. Throw it in the trash. Push. Need some napkin. I gotta pick it up. See, I don't like palmetto bugs, but little bugs are just like, <laughs> oh good. Okay, here you go. No! <laughs> That's what my dad always does. He's like, hee <laughs> Here, throw it in here. Here you go. It was Lily's shell when I squished it in the napkin. See, I can handle like the smaller like bugs, like those, but like if I see a big spider or roach, I'm just staring at that shit. Like, That's good. Sorry, y'all, I had a thought. Um, I, I saw it and I was like, it's gotta die. Well, it's dead. I didn't want it to be like next to Haley's head or something later. No, when that, when we were in like high school band and then we were playing a song and that palmetto bed was just crawling against the, along the wall and in tempo with our song. And at the end of practice, it flew down upon everybody. Oh my god. <laughs> Mostly into the clarinet section. It was really funny. <laughs> it, anyway. was like, it was like, How, you said you did 21 damage, right, Haley? 25. 25. Okay. <laughs> damage. Leon did 14 damage, he's only hit once. Okay, um, alright. Let me see what Saren does. That's so funny that no one knows to stake Josie, because they think vampires are fake. So technically she doesn't really have a way to officially die-die. Yes, we know that. Until she gets to Barovia, though. Yeah, and people are gonna hate her when she gets to Barovia. Yeah. She's gonna die. <laughs> well, you better not let her die, forehead. Well, what if she does? Yeah, forehead. Well, she wants if she does. Well, then I guess you're you're lo- losing your character. I guess you're losing a mommy. <laughs> I guess that's a skill issue. Okay, y'all did pretty good damage to this thing. Um. Mm. And it is bloody. Damn. Oh, no. Damn. Saren did hella damage to it. No, I know he did. He did shatter on a stone. Oh, stone nice. thing. Yeah, shatter, shatter on a stone thing? What was the stone thing? Um. Isn't the spider, like, right now stone? Or is that just a It's shape? just... Okay. That's not how shatter works. No, I mean, like, if it... Is the spider made of stone? Yes. No. no. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. That's what I was asking. No, it's not. It says, a sudden loud ringing noise, painfully intense, erupts from a point of your choice within range. It has nothing to do with metal, crystal, or... No, no, stone. it doesn't. I just... Because I think it does double damage to stone objects, basically. It does. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, they have disadvantage on the save, actually. Oh, okay. Um, was... But no, he, he just got... The spider got pooped. Okay. That's what um, I know. I and know. I'm going to give... The spider's going to take an action now. And then I'll let Josie take an action. And then I'll let everyone have another round. It's funny because like everyone else is in the doorway. <laughs> Josie's out in the goddamn middle of the place. The 
Does a 15 hit? A 15? No, actually. <laughs> That's surprising. <laughs> Holy shit. Why is her armor class so high? Look at her armor class. So much better see different. It's a cleric. Ew. Well, it missed both times, so it does nothing. It, it tries to bite you twice, and you go, ha ha, ha ha. I mean, she just moves too fast. <laughs> and it's your turn. That's Josie's turn? Mm-hmm. What's she got? Hang on, let me see. Cause she, she usually has pretty good, sometimes, good killing shit. Oh. Um, Are you hungry, Jackie? No, I got a poopy. Oh. Sorry for you. It's okay, can we be sorry for so long? <laughs> Damn, I guess I'll never be sorry for you again. <laughs> Lord. I don't know if there's that big of an issue. No, someone told me that in band as a joke, and I fucking blew up laughing. That shit was funny. My big hook, the blue book. And I fucking heard on the white. What do you want to do, Josie? Sorry, I'm looking at my spells, Mary. Okay, then focus. She's looking at her spells. I am, I was looking. You're talking. And I can at least look at my spells that for at least a damage spell. Like I have one. I only have one. So. You only have one demon spell? Yeah, I'm a cleric. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm a healer. I got an 18 to hit for a spiritual weapon. It's a bonus action. Yeah, that hits. Yeah, it's a bonus action, so it doesn't take my action. That's good. She got 16 radiant damage. Nice. Cool. And then she's going to actually do her actual action. And Kent is... Uh, can she make a check on the web and how strong it is? Mm-hmm. What check would that be? Intelligence. Intelligence. Well, plus two is all across the board, huh? She got a 15. Uh, you think it's sick enough to chop through? Can she use her- she, can she move quickly to the stage and chop one of the ends with her short sword? Um... So the way the spider web looks, there's a lot of ends to chop, but you think you could chop a person out. She'll chop, um, she'll chop Lucian out. Okay, you chop Lucian out. Yeah. Lucian's out. He's free. <laughs> okay. So Bora, might take it, take your turn. I'll just get ready for Leon. Zippy. And Leon, you can go ahead and too. Yeah, all he has is a gun, so. How much damage did Sarah do to it? 48. Oh, nice. Um, I'll do, I'll just do the same thing I already did. Yeah. I'll wait for you to go. Unless D and D Beyond decides to crash, <laughs> it's just <a snake. laughs> it's the spider's facing away from Leon and Sabora and them still, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna sure. Fourteen and thirteen to hit. Um, fourteen hits. <laughs> okay, twelve damage for that. Okay. Uh, what's Leon do? Um, he shoots twice. He gets a 15 and a 17. They hit. And he just rolls two, he rolls two dice. He adds them together. I can't really do anything else. He does 13. Nice. And Sharon. And he's like, you know, guys, yes, I'm a clear. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, Taryn barely had anything either. Until, he was even a paladin. Until she gets inflict wounds, then she doesn't do much. Yeah, all, all Taryn had, like, even towards the end of the, um, Diablo's campaign was he had, a uh, flame strike. Because, like, some of these are good, like, insect plague and all that. Sorry. You're good. Like, because you have, like, mostly the um, area control spells. You see Saren pull out, um, a fiery bow full of magic, and he goes... Get that. Um, <laughs> it's called Flame Arrow. Oh. Um, and he shoots off three arrows and one pierces it in the head and it falls dead. Yay! 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 Yay!
and um, you guys feel the arconic energy from this place re- removed. That's you may... Imagine some random bitches coming over here killing like the rumor. <laughs> And people saw that because people were inside the theater. Mm-hmm. For real. And then Jesse was like, "Well, like, damn, that's kind of fucked up." Good thing they saved us. And um, these people run up to you guys. They're like, "What are your names? You're heroes." And Jesse's like, "Well, my name's Jesse." And who are those people? Yeah, Leon, Sabora, <laughs> Leon, Sabora, <laughs> and Saren. You guys give them all your names and everything. They're like, "Wow!" They're like. You're especially cool. What are those? What are those cool? What are those cool things you shoot, man? Um, they say to Leon. Um, these I invented. This. This is called a gun. Wow. And they like run off and they run out the door and they're like, a guy with a gun saved us. Oh God! And he talked to the professor about. Oh no! <laughs> That's gonna be. That's gonna reach everywhere. And Leon's like, I don't know. And would you like to leave the building? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Leave. You guys leave the building, and that is your Wednesday. What would you like to do? Anything else with the day? Oh, what, what time is it? <laughs> it is encroaching upon night. It is about seven thirty. Oh, let's go home. Yeah, let's let's roll. We are yeah. getting out of here. Y'all go home. And uh, when you get to your house, Leon. What? You receive a letter. Huh? <laughs> where, where did the letter come from? Did it just like be... A man runs up to you and he's like, Letter. Uh, deliver thanks. Is? Deliver he seems letter. to be like a butler of sorts and he runs off. He's like, Cool, a letter. You I flip it I over it and it has an engraving on it and it has Sager Day and Airs. <laughs> it has Sager Day and Airs symbol on it. I can't read that. <laughs> it seems like you've received an invitation to the ball. He's like, me? <laughs> That's crazy. Archeon says, well, to be fair, you are apparently a savior. But, like, Saren did, like, a oh, hell of damage to that bitch. Okay. Saren shrugs, and he's like, I don't have... Uh, Saren shrugs, and he's like, I don't have a gun. <laughs> so it don't matter what I did. I mean, I guess... <laughs> you guys have no one's ever seen before. Yeah, people just heard... Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, Saren did all this shit, but they're like... Gun, shoot, whoa. I mean, it is, I guess magic is common, but then you see a gun, you're like, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. It's like if I wasn't like a peasant and I came up with, look at my nine. Would you like to do anything with your Wednesday? Anything else? I guess Josie and Saren practice. Yep, y'all practice some more. Don't they have a rehearsal at like eight? Um, we'll say y'all attended it. Okay, that's fair. Um, you had the rehearsal at six, so that's why... But it wasn't like a proper rehearsal. He basically just told you guys you need to study on your own. Because okay, y'all had one rehearsal and he's like, that's good enough. Um, that's good enough. That's so good. <laughs> that's so good. Would anyone like to do anything else before they go to Betty Bye? Hmm. For their Thursday. Before Thursday. I can't think of anything. And Leon's basically kind of set. <laughs> okay, bye. And you guys wake up. Um, those of you who remember things, you um, have dreams of your memories. Um, those of you who don't remember things, you have dreams. Um, Sabora, you have dreams of memories, but you still don't understand. Yeah. Um, and now you're, and now it is Thursday. 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 It's Thursday. It's Thursday. <laughs> I wake up. I hug we. Josie's cooking, I guess. Good. She always cooks. She, she remembers so. how to cook. She always remembers how to cook. <laughs> but now she knows. Josie's jam cakes. Oh god, she actually makes the pancakes because I bet Lucian's like, <laughs> she's like, hey, what's this? You want the pancakes, Dad? Jam cakes. Jam cakes, don't you? She remembers the calling pancakes too. Yeah, I'll make some, okay? James like, what is that aroma? <laughs> Sabora gets to figure out about it all over again. Oh my god, she does. Josie puts her plate out in front of you. 
of like these weird breakfast foods you've never seen. <laughs> what she has mean? seen it before. She just doesn't remember that it tasted really fucking good. Oh, that's true. She's like, mm-hmm. have some. It's, I guess, Jan Cakes, I'm just always calls it. Oh, okay. And you're like, you remember them being called Jan Cakes. You just don't remember the feeling associated with it. But now, they... <sighs> So you take a bite Listen. and you're like, <gasps> and like you get a memory, uh, and the, <laughs> the memory associated. No, no, no. The memory associated with Jan cakes now also has an emotion tied to it. So now you can tie the emotion to Jan cakes. <laughs> Um, and on this lovely Thursday, James approaches you guys and says, okay, you guys are intending on going to Sager's Ball, correct? Uh, Violently, yes. Sounds like me and Sabora have an invitation. Yes, and those of you going to the opera will probably get more. And given I'm going to have Archeon and Lucian as my plus ones to the opera, they're probably going to get invitations as well because they're going to be seen with me. Um... Therefore, you guys are going to the uh, ball, correct? Yes. You guys need to figure out your clothing. I'm figured. We have a day for you guys to figure that out. You know, it's a good place to get clothing. He says, you could go to one, the Old Gables, which is a bad choice, probably. We could uh, go to the House of Wax and see if we could steal any clothes from there. Since, you know, he is dead. <laughs> um, he's like. Well, we can't steal. That's against the law. That's very true. We get executed on the spot. That's true. So if anyone recognizes his clothes, they'd be like, "You stole that. You steal it." Yeah, I mean, that's a good you idea, stole. though. <laughs> um, you could also go to three different shops. He gives you the names, and he says one is for cheaper ones cheaper dresses and tuxedos and such ones for like medium priced ones for highest price highest price would be about 30 to 50 gold coins medium price about 20 gold coins and lowest price about 10 so what's the best way to get money jobs a job <laughs> but, but they don't pay enough i think well don't your friends there have like a whole opera gig going on? Just he's like, if we get enough, then we get enough money. <laughs> I hope you do. Is this is what James does? Yeah, he's like, good luck. <laughs> you guys should probably go practice. Yes. Anyway, you can have some of the breakfast on the table. What is this? It's Lucian. Lucian. She's like, Lucian's like Jane Cakes. Yes, it's, it's those. And he's like, Jan cakes? Don't ask, just eat. <laughs> That's what Sephora says. He takes a bite and he's like, oh, these are really good. He can take some, like, some to Ebony. I'm sure she needs some Yeah, sustenance. he goes, okay. He goes and takes it to Ebony. These shits are busted. These are busted. Oh, for real, for real. Oh, for real, for real. Also, that price includes masks. Okay. So you get a mask and the outfit. Cool. Um, okay. Would you like to do anything before the show? If you can't think of anything, that's okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, we actually could take a job, but also people say you can't take the job and look like the poopy, so. Especially not after he got a letter from Yeah, no, he's like, oh, Sandra. So let's go, let's go con people. <laughs> it's not stealing if you're conning people. No, it's just being an asshole. <laughs> so if you know how to play games and win at them. He said I could make shit for people, but I don't know if they know what they do. I don't Assuming know. anyone's gonna buy from you. Nah, that's sure. <laughs> Give everyone a gun. <laughs> Forcefully sell people guns. <laughs> so they're gonna have to make the Lucian same. says we still haven't figured out how we're actually gonna take down Sadra though. That's true. But how do we we it's also a- can't exactly talk about that at the ball because if anyone overheard us, we could get killed. So, 
It depends on what she what she is. It says the thing. It says the people know she is blank. So maybe the people know something about her. Um. Did we ask Ebony what she is, like, or does she just not know? When el- it's like when elegant, every everyone knows something. When she's dressed in an elegant gowns and an elaborate mask, those around her accept the obvious lie that she is a blank. And so she's a high board. That's what I, I bet. Or maybe a wraith. <laughs> they accept the obvious lie that she's a wraith. Uh. When she isn't hosting her masquerade balls, she sheds her garbs and blank. Her goal is the same, to unmask and destroy pompous fools who pretend to be what they are not, aspire for a higher station than they deserve, and fail to maintain the appearance of normalcy. So I definitely think one of those is Highborn. The obvious lie that she is. Um, But what she is, though, is the hard part, because we've never even seen her. I feel like she's wearing everything that we need from her. We could ask people who previously went to the ball what she wears. Well, you only need one thing as a talisman. Only one of those things will be a a missed talisman. Okay. So you got to figure out which one it is. Whoa. And if there is multiple versions, because with Strahd's, really, there was only the symbol of Raven Kine, which yeah. was the talisman, right? Mm-hmm. So that was the key. But the other stuff wasn't, obviously, but that didn't pop up in the campaign. Yeah. So what would pop up that is one of those things is the talisman, basically. Because I know Ebony mentioned that she wore gold shoes. Mm-hmm. Would she appear here yet? Uh-huh, she Which would imply that that's probably the Miss Talisman. Mm-hmm. So we need to get the glut, the shoes, basically. The shoes! The shoes! The shoes, and now we gotta have to find a process of how to, how to destroy her. Because we can't find her mother's grave. James says, um, well, if you're worried about meeting her, uh, You'll probably meet her tonight at the opera. Was she even bring her tonight? Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> and then... And your guy who did the whole advertisement for the opera, he broadcasted the fact that I was going to everyone. Sadra can't pass up an opportunity like that. The second most well-known person in the city is going to an opera, and she's not. She'd be missing out. That's true. So she'll show. That's true. And then, let's see. (laughs) What about that knife she killed? She she, she killed her brother with. James shrugs. He's like, I don't know anything about that. You guys said that that happened. That's assuming that it teleported here. Maybe we have to stab her just the same way she stabbed him. Maybe. Um, maybe we should read that part again in the, in the book. <laughs> you want to read it? I have it written down. Which part? The one um, where he she... She stabbed, stabbed her brother in the heart. Yeah. So maybe we have to do that. Maybe we have to like poison her. Cause she, cause she, came, she was sick. She came down. Let's with cause that a illness. disease at twelve at midnight. <laughs> Let's cause a disease, a plague. I wonder what that plague's about. No, it's kind of funny. Lucian says probably uh, a symptom of whatever deal she made with whatever fairy hag thing that was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I doubt that was her mother. Yeah. No, that definitely wasn't her fucking mother. Well, it's also not a coincidence that they have three of those here either, the whole Gables. <laughs> I'm not touching over there. <laughs> I'm not doing the thing. Yeah, okay. But 
did you do? Nothing. What did you do? Mm -hmm. So would you like to do anything else before the opera? Um. Because it is a guarantee you will meet Sage or Dayanair at this opera. Which might piece certain things together. Mm -hmm. We want, might want to try and dress nice just so we don't look like trash in front of her. <laughs> She's there. It's hard when it's we... It's probably a wise idea. It's hard when we don't really have any other clothes than the ones we are wearing right now. I guess some people are not going. Or, wait. I'm sorry, you're the only one with the nice dress? Yeah, yeah. but you can't... Oh. You also can't wear that multiple times because people would talk. Right. So you've already worn it once, so you can only wear it to the ball and be done. Yeah. Because if you wear it again, then it'll be a thing. Um, James says, do you want, like, nicer attire? And he's like, I mean, I can't get you, like, five-star attire, but I can get you at least middle-ish class. Better than low. That would be probably wise. He's like, okay. And he... Talks to his butler, and the butler leaves and comes back, and you guys have pretty appropriate attire. Okay. You guys, um, as in Josie and Saren, are not going to be wearing anything yeah. like that, because you're going to be dressed up, so. Everything else is cool. Anything else you'd like to do before the opera? No. All right, you guys kind of hang out, and Saren and Josie, you guys are already at the opera house practicing and stuff She's before the show. She's bless on herself. <laughs> She's casting bless. She's... <laughs> And um, it is about 5.30, and you, um, Sabora, Leon, and the rest of the crew, including James, you guys head over to the opera house. Abraham Lincoln assassination. <laughs> I keep thinking about it. I'm not going to stop thinking about it. What do you mean? It's how we actually kill her. Abraham um, as you Abraham approach Abraham. the opera house, Sabora and Leon... It looks like the entire city is attending this. Holy, Holy shit. shit. You see so many people that there might not even be enough seats. Whoa. There the might be over it. Like... Yeah, really. Um, you guys all arrive on time and you're chatting outside the opera house. You have you have about, uh, except for Saren and Josie. Yeah, Saren. Everyone else is talking um, in the outside the opera house kind of thing, waiting for the doors to open so they can sit. Um, that's when I need you to make a perception check. Jo not Josie. Um, Leon, Leon and, and Serb. Yeah, Leon. Nine. You're like, uh... Oh, yeah, yes, plus zero. 16? You hear a gasp, and you're like, <gasps> that's what you hear. And then you hear multiple, <gasps> I was like, huh? <sighs> I have a feeling that's Miss Sager. And, um, you Not see... Not gasping, but who they're gasping at. And you hear, start, you start to hear whispers, you... <laughs> and, um, you see... Everybody's starting to part ways. And you see who you could only assume to be Sager de Hener approach. She looks like this will go under character images. Yay. Me. We'll finally know what she looks like. Da ba dum ba ba dum ba. No! I got a down on the jiggy bit. She's a fix. She's a fix. She's a fix. Let me see if I can find it again. Sandra Danier. I love giving some more animalistic features. <laughs> But also, these are not even really bad. I'm just stupid. There you go. Why should you look like that? <laughs> she really... She looked like a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite snatch. And as she approaches, she smiles and says, James, always a pleasure. 
And he smiles cordially and kisses her hand and says, You too, Duchess. She laughs and says, Always so cordial. You know you can call me Sadra. It's not like we're enemies. Mm -hmm. Who are your friends? He introduces you all and he says, This is... <laughs> I do not want to say, like, seven people's names. That's fine. And she says, well, nice to meet you all. I'm Duchess Sadra de Hanair. Will you be attending my ball, James? And he shakes his head and says, no, my friends are in town and they're not invited. So, and he, his friends are y'all. Yeah. And uh, she pulls out, um, she pulls out two blank letters. And she hands it to Lucian and Archeon. Um, and she says, now then, you'll be attending my ball, right? And he glances at you all, then back at her and begrudgingly says, well, I suppose. <laughs> um, and she, he, he goes to say something else, but she cuts him off and says, brilliant. Oh, seems the show's starting. We must sit promptly. I'll bid adieu. And she goes to walk away. I want you to, to make Arcana checks on her. Ooh, plus zero. I made a lot of nines today. Twenty-two. She's a wraith. We guess that shit. And Leon's like, "Why are you looking at me?" So to read this again, it says. Sadra awoke on the foggy grounds of her new estate in Porta Lucene, a true duchess, as she had always imagined, but also an undead wraith. When she dressed, when she's dressed in elegant gowns and an elaborate mask, those around her accept the obvious lie that she's a living woman. When she isn't hosting her masquerade balls, she sheds her guards and blank. That is still blank. You don't know that yet. Her goal is the same to blah 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 blah. Like, Whoa. So, you guys now know that it is not higher low born. It's that they don't know that she's actually an undead wraith. <laughs> they can't tell. I mean, with that picture, <laughs> she's all wispy and gray and shit. And to also repeat one more time, because this is really important. Okay. Yeah. It says. When she's dressed in elegant gowns and an elaborate mask, those around her accept the obvious lie that she's a living woman. So maybe there's like some kind of magical, like, some kind of magicalness that make, that when people witness her, they're like, oh yeah, she's a real, she's alive. You can also ask James, who's walking with you guys to go sit. Mm. How, how do people not tell that she's not alive? What do you mean? It's a wraith. No, she's not. He don't know shit. And of course he doesn't know. Maybe we should talk later and tell him that's what she's doing. Which is funny because you guys saw her and she looks weird. She looks like a wraith to you all. Yeah. But to him, he says, she doesn't, she looks like a normal person. Mm. <laughs> she has dark curly brown hair and she has green eyes She's, and he's pale telling skin. Us that? Yeah. I don't see that shit. I'm like, well, I don't know what you guys were seeing, but kind of, one of us is wrong. He like whispers to to his sister boy, he's like, I don't know how Josie looks right now. Maybe she's like grayish. We'll, we'll talk later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, James pays for y'all's tickets. He gets the gold coins in. Um, and, <laughs> and, uh, you guys attend the opera. And for Josie and Saren, you're going to make performance checks with advantage. <laughs> I also have guidance casted on me. That's so nice for you. <laughs> one D4. That's so awesome. That's so cool. Oh, God, thank God he had advantage. Thank God, really. Twelve. I'm gonna add guidance to it because I want to. Did I roll the wrong thing? <laughs> Maybe. I got a seventeen overall. Nice. Saren got a twenty-two. 
So the curtains pull, and you see uh, the. Oh, how are they dressed? I want to know. Um, please. Uh, Josie, please. you are you're wearing a red wig, <sighs> and you ha- your eyes are perfectly red, so that's perfect, and you're painted red. And you have you have a red dress on. Red face. Yeah. That's awful. And Saren just looks like a noble person. Like himself. Right? Yeah, basically, but noble. <laughs> and um, you guys perform, and you're like la 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 la, and all that shit. And in this That's opera, awesome. you tell the story basically of the Red Death being like. And I hate noble people. Everyone's like fucking enthralled. And everyone's like, wow. And um, <laughs> and the Red Death, you stab Saren, and he goes, la, 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 la. <laughs> and he falls to his death. And the curtain, and you, you Josie, look at the audience, and you go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, see, I become Lady Gaga, <laughs> Lady Gaga. And basically, in this singing, you're like, and all of you are next, or some shit, and then they're like. Curtains drop, and, and everyone's like, "Wow!" You get a standing ovation, and the curtains re-pull open, and you guys bow, and roses are flung at you. That's a lot of roses. And even Sager De Hanair is standing, That's scary. clapping. Hey, hey, and James is like, "Why you?" And James and everyone else is also clapping, but you two see Sager De Hanair clear as day. Is she wearing gold shoes? Make a perception check. I was gonna say I can't really see it from here, but. A nat 20. She is. Can I have those shoes? You're just a great Can I have those shoes? Where'd you get those? Um, and, uh, after, you know, everybody leaves, except for your friends, because they're waiting for you guys outside, um, Perintius, he gives you guys oh. y'all's, uh, money. He's like, how much? Um, and he gives you guys... 50 gold peaches pieces each. Peaches. So 100 in total. Love peaches. I'm sorry, peaches. <laughs> peaches. So 100 gold pieces in total you have. Oh, nice. So that means we can both of us can afford an outfit. Or you could afford one for the whole team if you got $20 ones that are middle class ish. That's true. Because it's different than what. It's different than what your buddy uh, James got your friends to wear. Because he got clothing. But going to the masquerade ball, you have to go to a specific place okay, and get the okay. specific clothing. Got it, got it, got it. So the clothing that he got y'all to wear casually is not the same as the clothing you would wear to okay. a masquerade ball. Okay. So good. while people do wear these masks, the clothing that they wear do not match that of okay. a masquerade ball, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. They do dress generally nicer, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> lovely show. Good job, friends. Woo! Lovely show. She's like, Yes, I, that was, that was, that was and um, you guys exit, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. As you exit, um, you guys all you get outside to your friends, and Sandra Day Hanair herself approaches, and she says, "You both did a lovely job," and she gives you guys two invitations: one for you, one for Saren, and it has your names on them. Oh, that's cute. And she says. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. And he, she also glances at your friends at my ball. Thank you. And she gives you all a smile. Thanks. And I want you to make an insight check on that smile. Come on, Josie. Let's make some letters. Take some. I'm back 20. Nice. Two. <laughs> You're like, she smiles. She, she's so nice. Meanwhile, you, not fooled, she knows something about you guys, and you feel like this might be a trap. <gasps> Josie's like, thank you for the invitation. And she smiles, and she looks over at James and says, I can't wait to see you all there. So we're going to move across the country. <laughs> <laughs> and she turns, and she walks, and uh, she gets in her carriage and goes back to her estate. As soon as, like, she's out of, like, way far away, Jessie's like, she knows something. Lucian said she's a wraith. She is. Yeah, she is. And her smile, she is a trap. 
What is? I don't know. The, us going to the ball is a trap. Well, it's going to be a trap for her, too. <laughs> it's we true. just got to outplay her. Yeah. Basically, since she basically knows something, I'm sure she knows what we think she knows. So how do we defeat her like we defeated Strahd? Because she definitely has to die. She does. How do you kill a wraith? Well, how do you kill a vampire? Are they the same tactics? No, but I think it's a similar thing that we have to find a way to make her vulnerable. Can Josie roll a history check to know if she knows anything about wraiths? You think, without rolling a history check, just to give this to you guys, you think killing a wraith isn't going to be the problem. Okay. Killing her is not going to be the problem. It's kind of like how you guys tried to kill Strahd once. And he he like, didn't Whoa. die. It's going to be the same thing because there's certain circumstances. Because you guys had to destroy the heart in the house for you to actually be able to kill Strahd. Uh-huh. It's a similar thing. Maybe we have to unmask her in front of people. <laughs> That'd be so bad. That'd be awful. To show her true. Also, it would make so much sense. That'd be so funny. <laughs> Let's show the people who you really are. Because I'm sure that that's like one of her greatest fears is being known. James tells you straight up, actually, when you say that. He says, actually, that's a really smart idea. Because that is her greatest fear. Because if she's known as lowborn, the entire society will betray her. Mm-hmm. And then she'll, then she, I guess maybe that's sort of her weakness. Then she'll be vulnerable. Very much so. Literally and, I guess, physically, if she is a wraith. <laughs> He's still not convinced. Yeah, meanwhile, everyone's like, it's like, it's like, her and Josie looking along great. They're both undead. And Lucian says, but here's the issue. There's this, there's the other part. It says, when she isn't hosting her masquerade balls, she sheds her garbs and blank. Do you think that's probably the red, ploy to the red death? That maybe that's when she sheds her clothing, whatever she says, sheds her guards. That's for you guys to figure out as players, not me. Well, I guess I'll go out and stay out there. And, you know, if she, even if she is the Red Death, that would explain why anyone that sees it is killed, because anyone that would see her unmasked or whatever... She can't let them tell anybody. And also, that's why that artist guy died. Because maybe he had a bad deal with Sage and then he ended up being the victim of a red. Or he was a weak link. And Lucian says it's also an idea that um, when she's unmasked, she becomes the Red Death Wraith because that would explain why she's like a outlined figure because that's what a wraith is. It's a ghostly figure. Right. No one can tell what it really looks like. And Archeon says, that'd also be a good point because, um, you know, all of the Red Death's victims are stabbed through the heart. And, you know, her brother was too. She stabbed him through the heart. Yeah. According to the book. I wonder what that deal was to... Well, I guess we won't find out. <laughs> I suppose we could ask her before we get there. <laughs> hey, what's the deal you, you had? have asked her when she was right there. And Jesse's like, she's wearing gold shoes too. Okay. That is our talisman. So, <laughs> so, unmask her, then kill her, then take her shoes. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I feel like I've done this before. <laughs> Where? I don't know. I just... Why have you done this before? Oh, deja vu, I don't know. Why do you have deja vu with this? I think he's making shit up. I don't believe him. And, Leon's, and then Josie's like, Lucian's okay, like, sure what? Like a certain way. <laughs> Lucian's like, I don't remember him having a memory like that. Well, you didn't know him for 30 years. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know him for 30 years of his life. Fucker stole some of a bitch's shoes. Yeah, because Leon would back then. Like, just kill a man for his shoes? Sure. <laughs> He's dead. He's trying to do that nowadays. What you want? 
would do it, right? Would you like to go buy your attire? Yes. Okay. Other than Zabora, you guys do need good attire. Um, how much would you like to spend? Well, split evenly since there's four people that so, need. So, Saren, Archeon, Lucian, Josie, Leon. So five. A five. Five people. Okay. So five divided by a hundred is 20 gold pieces each. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's much as we can get. That's pretty good, to be honest. Yeah. Middle class dresses. And... Um, you, since you have some tailoring in you, can <laughs> now, actually tailor them to make them look a little better. She actually kind of has those memories, but even more so those memories. <laughs> yeah, so you can make them look, um, original. Upper middle class. That's fine, that's cool. It's original designs. People will be like, where'd you get it from? I made it myself. And, um,. James will actually give you guys jewelry and like adornments and stuff like that. So you'll look pretty damn close to high class cool. when you attend. Yay! And how's Ebony doing? Um, she's asleep right now because it's night. Okay, that's fair. Would you like to go to sleep and wake up and then check on her Friday? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, yeah cause you said Friday was like the day we kind of just prep and mm-hmm. plan. So yeah. Okay, you guys go to sleep. And wake up and again have dream memories. Things. Remembering things, but not remembering things. 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 So she cooks again for the squad. Gang, gang. This time she makes waffles. No. <laughs> gang, gang. I love a waffle right now. Um, Lucian says, Hey, so I read the book again after we had our discussion last night. Mm hmm. Um, it looks like it's completely filled in. You want to hear it? Sadra awoke on the foggy grounds of her new estate in Porta Lucine, a true duchess as she had always imagined, but also an undead wraith. When she's dressed in elegant gowns and an elaborate mask, those around her accept the obvious lie that she's a living woman. When she isn't hosting her masquerade balls, she sheds her guards and stalks the city as a murderous spirit known as the Red Death. In either form, her goal is the same. Mm. So she is the red death. Seemingly based off the book. <laughs> well, She's playing both roles. <laughs> to be honest. What does that say about her? What does it say about her? You then, Sabora, because you went on a date with her associate and then she killed said associate. She doesn't want us to get close to her. That's I what think I think partially, yeah. If she knows that you were broken out and she knows her sister went missing and this all coincidentally happened when we were in town, she might know a lot more than we think she knows. I was broken out of the guy's basement? Yeah. Oh yeah, he would have told her. <laughs> I mean, he. she probably would have known that you got kidnapped. Yeah. Um, given he took you to his place. Right. And she probably could have made a pretty damn good uh, assumption about that, given you guys went on a very public date, and if she's working with him, she probably knew how he was. Yeah. Conception. I assume. She's very smart, so that is a very good assumption. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think she's stupid. Not at all. I want a domain of Jared guys down the town. I can give you one. <laughs> like it's just he's just like doing shit and it somehow goes his way. <laughs> so how should we play her then? Um I feel like this is Saren talking. I feel like we should ask James how exactly the balls go. Like what is each step of it? I think that would help. Maybe we can line up with the story, too. Maybe we can ask Ebony if she has any advice. And how exactly would we quote-unquote unmask her? Mm-hmm. Like, are we literally just going to take her mask off? Or are we going to, I guess, prove that she's lowborn? Mm-hmm. I guess maybe 
Let's let us go ask them. Because maybe the ball lines up exactly with the story. How it works. Gang pulls up. You guys go over to James, and James is hanging out with Ebony. And you guys come in. He's like, hey. I want to know how the balls go. He's like, I've been to a couple, but I stopped in recent years because they're boring. Um, <laughs> well, partially. If you like watching um, people get killed on the spot, I guess they're fun. How many people died? Um, at least one per ball. Is one per ball? I can't think of like mass murder. <laughs> no, more like um, they kind of. I'm assuming get killed like they dropped it or they just killed like somewhere off random essentially drop dead it's hard to explain but they turn to ash she smites them she it's like Sadra looks at them and says something and they turn to ash before her Hmm. <laughs> Make an arcana check. I was gonna say, disintegrate, but just by words. Power word kill. Power, <laughs> Power word kill would leave a body. Would it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sabora saved me. <laughs> LOL. Everyone arcana check? Hmm? Yeah, I already arcana check, but I got like below tens. Fifteen. Nice. Um, yeah. You'd know this is Disintegrate. However, Disintegrate requires an incantation. And he basically said that she didn't say one. He basically says that she just condemns these people and they drop dead, disintegrated. She condemns them and they drop dead. Does he hear her or... James explains and he says, essentially, um, she tells them that uh, something along the lines of uh, that, quote unquote, she condemns them, but also that they've defiled her grand masquerade ball and that um, they're an unworthy presence at her ball and that uh, they're basically... A fake? Right. What are, like, the routines of these balls? Like, is there, like, a certain schedule everything goes down? No. It's just dancing. Just dancing. Eat. Go home. Take a yelp. Take a yelp. Take a yelp. That's it, basically. Does she do anything? Does she go around anywhere? She walks around the ball. Is that it? She, I mean, she vaguely talks to people. Is the whole palace open, or is it just a certain room? The whole palace. Oh. So nothing is off limits. Correct. I mean, you might be looked down upon if you're caught snooping, but for the most part, you're allowed to go anywhere. But you know, decorum would imply that you shouldn't go in rooms you're not invited in explicitly. Right, that's fair. Um, but essentially what Sager does at the ball is she walks around to see if and Ebony cuts him off and says I assume probably to see if anyone is not fitting her standards of perfect. I have no and he's doubt. he's like yeah he's like basically if you have one strand of hair out of place she'll condemn you it is that serious and if she condemns you you turn to ash so sometimes it's best to just stay out of her way or as far away from her as possible and she isn't known for teleporting anywhere in the palace right um no <laughs> he's like I mean I haven't seen her teleport okay seemingly she can just walk that'd be so scary like if anyone was in the hallway and she's like I see you <laughs> she's gonna be like, I see you I fucking run <laughs> this shit's terrifying as hell 
sure she'll have eyes in a lot of places, though, regardless. Yeah, I know she will. It's her palace, after all. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's her butlers or uh, paintings with eyes. <laughs> we always love the paintings with eyes trope. That's, like, my favorite. So glad for you. Um. Lucian says, so if we physically unmasked her, it would prove she's a wraith, but it still wouldn't <coughs> prove that she's lowborn. Low born. It could prove that she would be a lowborn. I mean, it proves she's a wraith, but also we don't know if just removing her mask, because it also, the book also says her garbs, so also what she wears. So shedding her mask might be a portion of it, but it's not going to reveal everything. Tyler was wearing to each part of her clothing as she walked by and just... <laughs> yeah. Naked! Naked! So basically, Liam's like, so basically, we, she's got to be naked? <laughs> Archeon's like... Or we could just expose her for being lowborn, and everyone will turn on her. And then it'd be chaos, and <coughs> and then we could just actually unmask her, like literally and metaphorically. We could take off her mask, and then also expose her to everyone. How would we prove that she's a lowborn when she's created such high status for herself? We had you and James to to to. To, to uh, witnesses, but I don't know if they believe a witness account. Unless we just publicly question her, but I don't think she would just say, I condemn you, and then we're ash. Yeah, basically. Um, Ebony says, well, I am... I mean, I can recount my story, and James can attest to it. And the thing is, is that no, witnesses won't matter, but James's opinion will matter. And the fact that I am saying that I am a close relative will back it up. People because remember, him. James is the second most prominent and high class member of this society. Right. Essentially, if, if Sadra and him were against each other, the town would be split Half and half. What was it? What if we got evidence that she's been murdering people? Well, I mean, that'd be hard. <laughs> it would be hard. Well, if you revealed that she's a, I guess, a wraith, as you say, then you could make the claim that she is the Red Death. And then she'd be executed because, well, I mean, that's when she can execute it. <laughs> yeah, she'll be executed by us anyway. <laughs> And the town would be like, oh, she broke the law. Which is like, on the two And James laws. says, because if you don't do this, the town will turn against you and try and execute you all yeah. Yeah. for accusing her of something that she's quote unquote not. So. So the thing is, is that you have to expose her, unmask her, and prove a point to them. That one, she's lowborn. Two, she's probably the Red Death and a killer, as you say. And three, she's a wraith. Yeah. Down. There's a lot. There's a lot to account for here to convince everyone. Mm. It's like to be fair, you have a pretty good case, um, given me because i can attest to the backstory of her being lowborn yeah obviously ebony can attest to the back story of her being lowborn um and and ebony says if i'm there she'll be unnerved she'll be vulnerable maybe because of that too um but she can't act out the book either. shakes Ooh. when she says that when Ebony says that? What is Sadra's weakness? It says, Flaw. Sadra day and air. I fear that one day my father, my stepmother, or stepsisters, or the mysterious spirit who clothed me for the Duke's masquerade will appear and reveal the shame of my true history. The face. <laughs> So I guess her true fear is her stepsister revealing her true past. And a fae. 
and a father. <laughs> one or, you know. All, yeah, all yeah. one or all. Let's go find the step the stepfather. <laughs> Lucian said, but you said, Josie, that he that she seemed to have a trap set up. Yes, she does. So perhaps she knows that we're going to bring her sister. That's why it might be too dangerous to bring her sister. But we also can't afford not to. No, unless we want to talk to her face. Do you think the people at the Old Gables? Because the only Fae that I know of here. They would know something, but it's very tricky to deal with Fae. And they won't do anything without a price. But could one of them be... That spirit? Possibly, I think. Mm. Only three fae in the entire loft, I guess. <laughs> Domain. And everyone here seems to really trust the old gables for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. They probably have the whole fucking place right now. I remember it said as the old gables that they'll help anyone out who's trustworthy. <laughs> so. That's also by their terms. <laughs> I mean, I don't think visiting them will hurt. I don't think visiting them will hurt. It's just, we can't really... It's just we have to be careful. Because <laughs> they are right. fey. <laughs> yeah, Lucian agrees, and he says, I think if we convince them to get on our side, then that would be a good way to get Ebony to the estate. And have, have a quick surprise for her because we have two voices. Exactly. <laughs> well, on top three, of James's. Yeah, like three voices. And so they'd have we'd have a lot of evidence to back us up. He says we could also look into um, the correlation between Alexandre and her and see if we could use that. I think we should look into that. Maybe split off that the gables. So some people go to find out what Alexander had with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then part of us go to the Gables. Leon, you're not going to the Gables. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I think those are two good ideas to do this Friday at least. The mm-hmm. ball's at night on Saturday, so we do still have the morning as well. Correct. Yeah. Is there anything else that we should look into in this regard? This is Lucian talking. Well, it said... There's it said that her father did not die. I didn't see anything about his death. No, but also this is a realm. That's true. He died out of the realm. Oh, he was left out of the realm. I think, I think it's like Strahd's story in Barovia. I think every person who is here currently has a role to play, and if they're not here, they don't have a role in that. That's so like... Irina. That's why James is here? Yes. James is like the equivalent of um, Rictavio or uh, Esmeralda or Ismar. Josie's thinking of that time Rictavio got fucking. She was like, she's like. Dead and now you're using his book. Kind of crazy. She's like looking at the book and she's like, oh shit. He wrote this. Yeah, she's like. And she's like, so that's basically the equivalent of who, um, James is. But Ebony is essentially the equivalent of Irina. Yeah. Which is the thing that could technically take the big bad down. Mm -hmm. Just like Irina was the key to taking down Strahd. Because she's the whole purpose of the curse kind of thing. Yeah. And I guess her purpose of the curse is the people that know her for real. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the thing that ties the curse around. Like, it, it's the thing that ties it all together. Yeah. You, if, you, if Irina was never there, you would have never got the information of that she was a reincarnation of Titania. You would have never got the information of this is why he's here and all of his backstory and everything. If you would have never found Ebony, you would have never got this backstory either. Because as much as James would have known, he wouldn't have known enough. Yeah. Right. That's what Ebony is basically here for. Mm-hmm. Give you the, slice, the slices. <laughs> mm-hmm. And also be 
the weakness yeah. and the flaw. Just like Irina was Strahd's. So it's just like a matter of, if, if we get her there, it's a matter of protecting her from... Her just killing her immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is why it'd be smart... And Lucian to says, keep her in crowds, maybe, so that she's that, not seen. Or if we got the old gables on our side. Which is very agree if we can get the old gables on our side. And it seems like if they already said that they don't seem to like Sage all that much. No, not much. So maybe they're So if we since we kind of have a solid plan, then maybe they'd be more likely to agree. Compared to going in the beginning, we didn't know what was going on. <laughs> so we're going to go... So some of us are going to visit the Old Gables. Some of us are going to go to the um, investigate Alexandre du Cerce and his correlation to um, Sadra. Yes. Yeah. Is there anything else you guys think we should explore? Because personally, I think we're good. Because I did want to know about the Red Deal. And the Gables definitely is something we've been avoiding. But now that we know that that's one of her weaknesses, then why not? Potentially, yeah. We can't visit her mother's grave because that was a whole other fucking area. It was, yeah. yeah. So the rest of her family basically doesn't matter. The other mm-hmm. stepsister's gone. Um, we already discovered the red bull of beer. That shit, dead as hell, gone, dead. It's never gonna be back again until it resets. To the cathedral. I'll just come back to the cathedral and look at Melodia. <laughs> they don't know it's Melodia. I'll just go back and stare at her. We got some memories back even though that was like a speed run. Yeah, which we can't even do anything with because. No, I mean, at least the place is a vampire. <laughs> um. Well, having your memories back is helpful because you remember Barovia. Yeah. And so. that, that starts to help you understand how Ravenloft worked, kind of like so Lucian like... was doing for you guys. He was making a correlation between the Curse of Strahd, a.k.a. Barovia, and this yeah. Dementive you, which shows that Ravenloft as a whole is a prison that's alike with each Dark Lord, though they're different domains. They all have particular characters that play particular roles. Yeah. So we probably should visit the uh, Old Gables. I just, I don't have anything else that I can think of that we need to cover. No, we did cover a whole lot. Yeah. Archeon says, I think that... uh, our pal over here, Leon, should probably take voice classes or something. I'm getting better. Kind of. A little bit. I'm getting better. <laughs> Archeon mimics. He's like, <laughs> you're close. <laughs> no, it's fine. I can, I can do this. Maybe Ebony can help. <clears throat> yeah, maybe Ebony can teach you how to do an accent. Like mine. Maybe I just need to go to my country accent. Maybe it's going to be harder because you kind of grew up like that. I still don't know. I still don't understand how I grew up like that. The more you practice, the more likely when you get there and you have to talk to people, you will be able to not do it. So that needs to be a thing you proactively work on. Because you, you can look the part because I give you a makeover. <laughs> um, but you need to actually sound the part too. I can, I can do it. Practice. <laughs> Actively try. So after we do the things that we need to do, you need to practice tonight. Yes. If you mention next session, because I'm going to end the session yeah. here. Um, if you mention next session that Leon, Friday night, <laughs> practices that accent, I'll give him advantage on performance checks regarding his voice. Okay. That's funny. Nerve wracking. I'll become Australian. (laughs) (laughs) And um, James is also going to teach you guys proper etiquette tomorrow as well. He'll say, I am going to teach you guys tomorrow proper etiquette on how to act. So um, probably practice that tomorrow and tomorrow morning um, or or Saturday morning. That way you guys can kind of get a handle on it. 
Yes, for sure. Um, because you guys need to know proper etiquette. Because if you mess up slightly, for example, you use the wrong fork, um, you're dead. Like Josie and Archeon are like pretty knowledgeable. Archeon and Josie um, are pretty well off because they're nobles. Um, Sabora, not so much. Um, Saren. Saren's pretty decent because he was also raised in like a noblish house. He also has his previous memories. Yeah, yeah. So, kind of like so he Josie. also remembers being Sergei. Yeah, he does. Um, and Sergei was. A noble. He basically, like, knows more than the average. Yes. <laughs> he can, like, easily pick it up. And, um... He all would know, but he just forgets. Lucian, Lucian does not know much. Um, <laughs> at all. Uh, so, him, Sabora, and Leon are probably all in the same boat. Even though, I think this Leon was noble descent, but he just forgets. <laughs> This Leon was noble descent, but also Archeon never er, really tried to change Leon in any way. So whoever he was at his core, because y'all didn't change any cores. Yeah. Whoever Leon was at his core was who Leon was. I forget. Look at this grungy-ass man. <laughs> yeah, grungy-ass noble. Imagine. But yeah, so we're going to end the session there, and then next session you guys will pick up here. With you guys running around and doing a bunch of shit and trying <laughs> to put everything together. We're slowly getting there. And you'll defeat Sager de Hanere next episode. Yay. This one this one was a lot more like preparatory. Yeah. yeah. And kind of like get everything set up and ready. And also Beat her. I mean, I was gonna have y'all literally already like, you know, going to the ball and stuff. But then you guys started remembering shit because Josie rolled so fucking high. I can't help that I was she rolled like, 24. No, because I was like, yeah, I'm going to give them things and I'll give well, them a chance. Well, definitely dice on the surface being like, yoink. Of... Well, it doesn't fucking matter because you fucking beat it. Like, hella beat it. Like, you got above a 20. Like, I mean, you, you woke up and you were like, these bitches be trying to test me. No, because like, you can't test Joe. She punched Abaddon in the face and was able to get away successfully after punching literally him. Literally was face. like, these bitches test me and think that I'm playing. She's like... I was like, well, fuck. No, that's what got me. I was like, I knew we weren't supposed to get our memories that fast. And I was like, am I speedrunning or something? Like, huh? Yeah, no, you weren't supposed to get your memories back that fast. But... The rolls and the dice, I guess. But I, I had, like, a concept in mind for yeah. how, like, if you did happen to get your memories back early enough kind of thing. But it's going to be one of those things, um, as I explained it previously with the rolls, it's it's going to be really hard to get them fully, fully back. But two of your NPCs have already done it. So, like, good on you guys. You got Saren and Lucian who already understand yeah. kind of what's happening. Slowly knocking it out one by one. So they can kind of give you hints and stuff now about your past if you don't really understand it. Yeah. But to be fair, both of your characters do remember this other timeline. It's just, for Sabora specifically, she doesn't know the feeling, so it kind of feels like a detached timeline of, like, thoughts and memories. Whereas, Josie, you just can't tell what's real and what's not. I was like, this is a lot. <laughs> you close your eyes and you're like, which one's the real me? You're having, like, an identity crisis. I mean, yeah, there's, like, two different... Things. Josie's in two different lives. <laughs> Like, one, you grew up, you literally raised Lucian and Leaf from babies, and, and like, the other one you didn't. Uh -huh. And she's like, this is like... <laughs> one, you literally gave birth to Leaf. Yeah, she's like... This one, you didn't. She's like, this is crazy. You're like, damn, I never gave birth? That's wild. I have a full-ass memory she's, of that. She's trying to hide her crisis. She's like, let's just keep that. We'll just hold on to that. I think, I think, I think... I think Lucian and Sarah are going through. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just, just put it aside for a second. <laughs> Sorry, I'm resetting because that almost It's gonna be gonna really fucking different. trash when Sabora realizes what's reality and realizes her kids aren't actually fucking real. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing with Archeon yeah, and Leon. That's gonna be a bitch. Like, uh -oh. It's gonna be a huge, like, reality. I mean, Sarah's already going through it for his sisters. For Luna, yeah. Disappeared and. Yeah, Lucian's like, what? <laughs> Lucian's like, holy shit. 
I'm sorry for that Josie became a vampire again, but she was knocked out, so she didn't feel jack shit. She just was like, what? I love Lucian so much. I'm sad that I can't play Happy Go Lucky Lucian. I'm sorry I did that. Yeah, you did do that to him. Well, I couldn't help it when I was rolling. Josie was rolling like a goddamn freak out of head. See, you guys are Lathander followers, so he had to pick, like, both of you. Like, well, Lathander, well, Lucian's a son, but he's still a follower, technically. Yeah. So he had to call both of you, and he called both of you, and then you're like, I remember. Because <laughs> Lucian wasn't going to remember, and then you were like, bitch. And then he was like, oh, shit. Bro, I do remember, actually. That's what got me, was the fact, why is it Josie? She was, like, running as a, a bat out of hell. Like <laughs> She was like, I don't know what's going crazy. You know, you got you to gotta head start. We'll see how hard it is for you to pass that. And Intellect. Well, I'm sorry, both of my characters. Leon has plus zero, so that's gonna be fun for him. He's gonna never remember. So girls are fun. Like how? Cow. Yeah, plus zero, so he's gonna have fun. What did you think? It was good. Good. <laughs>